you have goals and you're motivated to reach them, but the path to success isn't always clear. Until now, get faster with intelligent training driven by your goals to give you the right workout every time. Adaptive training from Trainer Road is the future of training. It uses machine learning, science-based coaching principles, and an unprecedented data set to train you as an individual. With every success or in response to any setback, adaptive training adjusts. Stay on track for your goals no matter what. You are an individual, and now your training plan is too. Use the power of adaptive training for your schedule, your life, and your goals. It's not just a training plan, it's your training plan. Adaptive training from Trainer Road. The right workout every time. Hello, everyone. This is a giant day. <laughs> I knew I was going to say that, right? It's a giant day. It's a big podcast. Um, we have a huge announcement, and what we're going to do today, we're going to go through all of it. I'm going to get to that in a second, but first, I want to back up and talk about Trainer Road's purpose. And you've heard us before talk about we make cyclists faster, but that is our purpose is bigger than that. Um, I want to talk about something called a BHAG. So a BHAG is uh, Jim Collins came up with this. It's called Big Hairy Audacious Goal. And these, this is what companies do where they look at something. It should sound a little unreasonable and a little fantastical and be many years out. To give you an example, FedEx in the 80s, their BHAG was let's deliver a package anywhere in the world in 24 hours. And people were like, that sounds silly. Why would you want that? And that's impossible. Now today, it seems inevitable, right? It seems, of course, that the world's going to end up like that. Bill Gates, Microsoft, they talked about having a computer on everyone's desk. And that seemed crazy back then with the size of computers. And now you probably have four computers within reach of yourself, right? Think about how many computers are on an airplane, like when you sit down there. It is, it's insane to think about that. Now, for us, we have a bigger purpose. We want to make our big BHAG is to make the world faster. And now that means something different for someone in their 70s than someone in their 20s. But if you think about a place where the world is faster, what that means is, uh, well, their health is better, they're happier. Um, we can reduce by actually being faster and being a healthier person. This sounds silly, but I think you can change the economy of nations. Think of in the US alone, how much money goes towards healthcare how much pain and suffering goes for preventable disease where if you were a air quotes faster you know faster is if you're if you're healthy you're faster uh, could happen in the world now in order for this to happen uh we think that ai is the way forward for this and uh this has been in the plan since the beginning this has been i think three years in development what we're talking about today and Someone's going to do it for sure. I think in 20 years, what will happen is uh, it'll be inevitable. 20 years, human coach, human coach for skills, yes, but for picking your workouts, I highly doubt any of us will be doing that. Now the question is, who's going to do it and how fast are they going to do it, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today inside of this very special podcast episode. <laughs> so we're super excited about it. So here's how we're going to go through. And uh, I know I'm going to talk a lot during this, but the, all the other uh, co-hosts are going to come in too. We're going to talk about what it is, uh, how it works. We're going to go into the machine learning, some of the data, um, talk about some of the visioning for other features. We've been kind of uh, radio silent on this sort of stuff because uh, we didn't want to like, I want to share, but I don't want to tease. So that's, there's a difference in that. And you can know exactly what our future is and where we want to go. And then hopefully too, a discussion in the forum, uh, trainer.com slash forum, we can help even push it forward. And at the end, I know a lot of you want this, we are going to have a um, mention about polarized training, how we're going to leverage our machine learning inside of that, and I'll have an announcement at the end, um, but I'm sure a lot of you are looking into for that too. So anyways, co-hosts, co are you pumped? So, so excited. Pumped. <laughs> <laughs> so this oh, yeah. is, this is sorry, just one thing really quick. This is something that um, is, is that Amber has been working on. A lot of people behind the scenes have been working on this. So as we go through this and explain all of it, um, hopefully what we can do is, is give you insight. And we really are going to share a lot of behind the scenes on how this works. So what that means is that you'll 
understand why this is absolutely unique and unprecedented in this space right now. So um, a lot goes into this. It's really tough. Thank you, Amber, and many others for all of your work on this too. It's a so big, big team effort. There's a <laughs> lot of people behind making this happen, you guys. And for everyone who's listening, thank you. You guys are amazing. 100%. Okay. So what is adaptive training that we're announcing today? The idea of this is we want your training to adapt based on your performance. Everybody's different. Um, I'll, we'll talk. So previously with our training, we've always tried to, uh, do a bell curve, right? So if you say life's a bell curve, we try to hit the middle to get the most people better all the time. But there's all of these things that happen, uh, with physiology and with life in general that could make it that if you fell outside of that bell curve without podcast, you know, without knowledge and stuff, it was hard to adjust. And the podcast itself, we've been trying to say these things over the years to try to get it where if you do fall in those ones, you can make some kind of adjustments yourself. But, you know, uh, we read, uh, you've probably seen me around on the forums on the internet, we read it all. And we tried to make a system to solve everything that we could and have that system self improve that core value of constant improvement in the future that based on the data coming in, it gets better and better and better and learns from your, uh, your performance as it goes along. So that's super exciting. I'm going to talk about, it's just, it's a, it's a lot of stuff to talk about. And because I'm talking about details, I'm hoping the other podcast coaches can help me with, uh, talking more about the value, cause I will go just way deep into the details. <laughs> and also too, there's some stuff that is proprietary and I'm going to try to call that out. Uh, and we'll have more discussions on the forum. I'm sure I'm just going to be typing for like days away. And I really, it's really hard for me not to share everything, but I know there's some things I can't share. So I'm sorry about that. So the, the basis, the kind of core of, uh, adaptive training is built around the idea of progressions. So a progression, and this is a progression per energy system. So one thing you may have seen in that launch video is we are breaking out sprint, anaerobic, or VO2, threshold, sweet spot, tempo, endurance. Those are all now their own measured energy systems with their own progressions. But you don't have to test them because we think that uh, testing, it, it, there's its own inaccuracies inside of that. That's why I developed the ramp test uh, rather than like a 20 minute or eight minute test. So what we've done is for these energy systems, we've built out progressions. So they're, they are measured in, uh, level one through 10 and they take into account the difficulty, uh, the rest periods, the peak difficulty, the, the, the duration. And what this allows you to do as we can really finally measure where you are in this, uh, energy system. So Chad, what, what are some examples of progressions inside of it? Like an energy <clears throat> system. Yeah. So uh, let me give you just three really straightforward ones. If you look at an endurance ride, something where you're just doing long, slow distance at maybe 60, 65, maybe 70% of your threshold, maybe it's a two hour workout on a Sunday. And then the next Sunday it's two hours and 15 minutes. And then the next Sunday it's two hours and 30. In that case, we're progressing it in terms of duration. Uh, something like sweet spot where we commonly, or I commonly start off with a, a four by six workout that could progress to a four by seven workout the next week, and then a four by eight, the progressions can take place in a number of different ways, but either way, we're focusing on that energy system and making it a little bit progressively more challenging and potentially productive the following week. And then VO2 max, you know, it's really common to start with the traditional length, two minute VO2 max repeats. And then we maybe progress that to two thirties and then a week or two later, progress that to three minutes. And it might not even be, uh, the duration, but also the percentage. So mm -hmm. for VO2 max, a, a lower level VO2 max might be a 115, 117. And then what we can do is based on your performance, we can start you at the correct spot. There's one thing that's super important in this that's going to mess with a bunch of people's brains. It has messed with all the trainer roads employees brains is TSS versus like where you're in your progression level. Let me give you an example. Four by 10 minutes at threshold in the same hour workout is the same TSS is 140 minute interval at threshold. Which one are you better? Which one are you stronger at? <laughs> yeah. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> right. I think we all which know one which one of those you. is harder. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you're, you know, if you're, uh, trying to do a 40 K TT building in a progression from 10 minute intervals to 12 to 15, maybe then it's a little bit less and having this, uh, this system correctly can go get you to those 40 minutes. 
Um, and we're going to talk about that with how this relates to ramp tests and how we, we make sure that you don't uh, jump in too deep too early because that's also been a problem with a lot of people. Uh, so I, I see here that, oh, one other thing. It's really cool. We, we'll get into our machine learning failure rates on, on top of the, the workouts. But what we did is we developed a, it's an algorithm to uh, rank the difficulty of workouts and it's unique per energy system. But then also we have machine learning failure rates that we then, uh, we cross-referenced and we have a very strong uh, correlation between what our, uh, how we rank workouts and actually like how likely someone is to finish those workouts based on our machine learning, the, the failure rates. And so that's, I'm just saying it's, uh, we're very happy with it. And it's amazing how you can titrate really closely how difficult a workout is. I see here, uh, we've got an image share coming up. Yeah, please uh, share the image. Now I can't see this image at all, so I can't talk to it. Uh... <laughs> there you go. Okay, so this now is called, sorry, let me pin this so I can see it better. This is a new chart. Um, this is your progression level chart. So as you go through and you work uh, inside of this new adaptive training system, you have a new level for endurance, tempo, sweet spot, threshold, VO2, anaerobic, and sprint. And as you accomplish a workout, these levels will adjust based on your performance. Now there's different decay rates per energy system, and we've talked about this before. Um, there's a different ability to do other workouts and get moved up. And there's also a relationship between uh, energy systems. For instance, if you do a two by 20 threshold, well, it actually will push up your sweet spot energy system. And we've also used our data. What, what we did is I alluded to this a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago, is the relationship between how hard a level you can do in one workout energy system and how that relates to your performance in another energy system. And that's, we use that data to figure out those, to be able to create this, this, these projections here too. And this built in with our plans allows you to see what your projected, uh, energy level inside of that system, like what, it, what your threshold level is going to be at the end of your plan and where you started at. So for instance, this athlete has, uh, increased all their levels and it's projected a lot in the future. Now, one thing that we've seen on this and that we're very worried about is that everyone might want to be like level tens throughout everything. That's, you don't need to do that. That's kind of like, uh, this is a reflection of where you're at right now and it's going to change a lot. And if you're a triathlete and your sprint says a level two or level one, like you don't need to make it level 10. But if you're a crit racer and your anaerobic says level one or two, that's probably a bad thing, right? But our system will automatically help you improve that without you having to worry about it. So that's, that's really the goal is if you, let me say this a different way. If you've been someone, and we'll talk about this the ramp test, but after you do a test, you have problems in a specific energy system, this is fixing that. This makes it so you get the appropriate VO2 max, you get the appropriate threshold, you get the appropriate sweet spot, the appropriate endurance based on your performance. And for everyone who's already been signed up, we already have your data. We know where you lie and it's already been ran through it, which is super cool. Yes, Chad. Yeah. So basically we're chasing improvement in relevant energy systems. We're not chasing perfection in all of them. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. And this is, so another way energy systems, we're kind of using that interchangeably right now with, with training zones and what your power zones are. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> just to clarify that. And then one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, we know there are individual variations, not only in your physiology as an individual, but also in your training history too. Right. So Pete and I are really good examples of some contrasting profiles in this regard. So Pete could pr progress his top end systems like VO2 anaerobic and sprint way faster than I can. Like he's going to start way ahead of me, no matter, even if he's coming off the couch. Um, Chad, you had some comments on that one too, because yeah, he's kind of a unique animal. <laughs> he, he absolutely is. He's, he's one of those guys who doesn't have a really high VO2 max, but he can work at long durations at really high percentages. I mean, he can almost hold mm -hmm. VO2 max for minutes on end. Whereas most people train for a couple, you know, a couple minutes at a time before they have to rest before they can do it again. So the way he progresses through VO2 max is very different than the way someone like I would progress through it. Yeah, yeah, or and, me. Yeah, go ahead, Nate. No, I just saying like to the uh, this these things change very quickly too, based on what you've trained recently and what you haven't trained. 
Uh, if you've done a whole bunch of threshold and you've never done any VO2, your VO2 is going to like pop up really fast and it, it works vice versa too. And that's why we needed to build something where even inside of a six weeks, like your rate of ramp change depends on uh, internal like uh, uh, physiological changes, your past training history, but also your lifestyle and what's happening. So we didn't want to make it a, a static system. It had to learn from each performance and move forward. And we'll get uh, more on that in a second. Uh, can I move on to ramp test? Or do you guys have anything else to say about the uh, levels? Well, I was just going to reiterate a little bit that, you know, Pete is one, you know, Pete has a certain kind of physiology profile where somebody like me, I can bring my FTP up really fast because I have a really, really long training history, but my top end always takes a little while to come around. So that's kind of where my physiology naturally lies. And just because your physiology is a certain way, doesn't mean you have to play directly to that. Like Chad was saying, we want to be relevant. So what we want to do is look at what your goals are. So the goals are really important. Nate, you mentioned this, if you're a triathlete or you're somebody who's focused on 40 KTT, we're not too worried about what your anaerobic or sprint zones are doing, right? We're really worried about where your threshold VO2 and sweet spot are going to be. So what we want to do with the system is we want to help you get to where you want to be in the zones that are relevant to your goals. And we want to help you get there at the rate of progression that's going to be accurate and correct for your individual physiology and not only your physiology, but what's going on in your life too. Cause if you're going through a really high period of stress, that's probably not the time to progress really, really fast through your, through your progression rate. Yeah. yeah. And what, and some things to add to this really quick, Nate. So a good point too, Amber, you mentioned that for the different types of riding you're going to do or racing, you're mm -hmm. going to do, but it's also dependent on the different phase that you're in. For example, in the base phase right now, my VO2 anaerobic and sprint, they're really low and that's where yeah. they should be. Right. Because I haven't been working on them. So it, to answer, I guess the question of like, well, this, this always going to make me year round as a crit racer, really high anaerobic and sprint. No. Mm -hmm. It's going to train you as the athlete you need to be and build that as you go. What your levels will be is a manifestation of improvement along the way. So that's the really cool thing. I think a lot of us athletes are going to look at how we improve now from a totally different lens. Instead of just like, it's my FTP and dang, it didn't go up or wow, it really went up. Instead, we get to see ourselves step all the way along and for a specialty workout. plan. Yeah. And maybe for a specialty plan, like the crit plan, maybe you won't see a big FTP increase, but that doesn't matter right? Because you've done all that work. You've gone through a build phase. You've done all of that. And instead it's really about aerobic and sprint. So if right. I can if just, FTP... yeah, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead. I was just gonna say, if your FTP hasn't gone up a lot, but you've gone from a point of being able to do four by 10 at threshold to now you can mm. do a one by 40 at threshold. Even if your FTP hasn't come up a lot, that's huge progress. That's huge, huge yes. progress. And now we can see that really clearly and you can see it happening in real time as you're putting in the work. It's cool. Yeah, and it's super rewarding. And one, yeah. one thing, Nate, just before no, I toss going. it back to you on this, I want to recap <laughs> something very clearly for everybody. So if you are bad at VO2 max, this fixes it. If you are bad at sustained work, this fixes it. If you find yourself always coming and Nate, will talk about this in just a bit with the ramp test. If you find yourself frustrated because testing, whichever format you use, you feel like it doesn't give you an accurate read. This fixes it, whether it's high or low. So that's really important to get into all of our heads here because this uses these levels to be able to train you as an individual. It's super cool. And I'd say too, it's not that you're bad at it. You just weren't in the middle of the bell curve, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. it made things either too hard or too easy for you. It's a relative um, weakness. Ex mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about the ramp test. So the ramp test is stain. And what we like about the ramp test is a, it is a repeatable all out effort. It, you don't have to, uh, we don't like the 20 minute or eight minute test that we used to do because you had to know what your FTP was before you did it, or you need to know your power target because if you don't do that, you won't have a, uh, you won't hold a consistent average power. And if you know that, why even test? It seems kind of silly to do that. <laughs> so, right. Sorry. Yeah. You just blew my mind on it. Sorry. And, yeah. and two, with our data, with our failure rate data that we have, which again, we're going to go into it more. We've seen that people who do the 20 minute or eight minute test are more likely to fail workouts, but also do something we call internally a super pass, which means they go way above. So the, what we see is on those kind of tests, they aren't, uh, they don't, they don't get people locked in as close as they should. But on the other hand, not everyone is that 75%. And I have seen people say that they either, you know, they, they do the ramp test and either the next workouts are very easy or workouts that should be uh, achievable are very hard. And that has killed me. 
Like I hate seeing those things. And what we've done on the podcast is we've talked about, you know, adjusting uh, the workout intensity that's built inside of there. And you kind of like titrate it yourself inside of workouts to be able to, to get a good, you know, to get more fit. And that worked, but this is way better. So what we do now is after the ramp test, we have learned how after ramp test, how, uh, what levels you should be at. So if you are air quotes bad at VO2, and maybe you need to start your progression at a, you know, 115, 118%. Well, we've now learned that and we'll start you at that level in order to progress through that energy system. Same thing with threshold, uh, that we can put you at the more appropriate place and people are pretty wide. Uh, you can be all over the place. Another thing that this is really cool is inside of, uh, because we have levels, uh, and we've experienced this a little hard once, once you start doing it, you really experience it, but let's say my FTP right now, I'm a 350 FTP at a level four, uh, threshold. If I am a level eight threshold at 350, I am way faster. You get to really feel and see your performance increase without having to do a ramp test all the time. And then what we did is once you do a new ramp test and you uh, get a new FTP, we made that relationship more linear. So everyone who's experienced that where you do a ramp test and then your next workout like is so hard, it will now be more progressive and in, it'll be more lined up to your performance and where you should be. But two, you see some people, I hope this is the way that people start talking about it, but they'll say, Hey, my FTP is, you know, some big number. And you say, well, what level can you do? And they're like, I can do a level two. We have an internal system that can show like a level, a 370 level two is really like a 340, a level eight. There's some room in here that you can grow and stuff. And it's also nice as if you don't uh, retest all the time, you got a good way to go up and down. Uh, I think people will, as you start using these, you'll really get to, uh, to understand. Now, John, you had something like this happen to you, didn't you? Yeah, I, so, and I think I mentioned this on the podcast and I've alluded to this, by the way, if anybody's playing the drinking game right now, I'm going to give you terms after this, and you're going to have to go back to prior episodes and find all the Easter eggs that we nested into this podcast, <laughs> key terms for this to try to lead you all on. But anyways, um, within this, I had a, so I was sick, took some time off on the bike, then took a ramp test, scored what I thought was low. It was 287. And I was like, man, in a week, I bet I'm going to be way above this. And if you're listening to this, you may have been in this situation before where you're either disappointed because you feel like the test doesn't represent your actual ability for one reason or another, or just, you know, life dealt you lemons and that's all you could do. But I stayed the course because I wanted to test the system. And what happened is that as I started training and, and Nate will get into this in just a little bit, but we have the objective feedback that is our performance data and then our subjective feedback, which is a very short, quick, uh, one click survey after you finish a ride to let you know how the ride felt. I was saying that ride felt easy. That ride felt easy. And then our system was giving me workouts within these progressions that were ramping up faster. And as a result, I got to that kind of, and, and forgive the term here, but I got to that sweet spot of where I needed to be. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, I got to that sweet spot of where I needed to be to hit the ideal progression. I had the best training I've ever had. And it, that was a five week loading block went into a ramp. So keep in mind, bad FTP test result in my mind, right? And then I had fantastic training right after that. So that's one thing. Then I had a really high, uh, um, I thought high, like I, I ended up going all the way from 287 to 311, really excited. And everybody that's hearing this, the first thing that you think of when you have a really good ramp test result is you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like yeah. my workouts are going to crush me, right? Those next workouts. Yeah. Yes. And I was <laughs> terrified of it, but I went into my next workouts, perfectly linear build. So if I can like use my hands to illustrate this, you know, you have a bad ramp test. You feel like your training isn't enough. And then you have a really good ramp test and you feel like your training is killing you and you drop back down again. It's not like that at all. So when you have these tests where the results are variable or not representative of what you feel, it doesn't matter. It adjusts for it as it goes. And then you get this really linear trajectory and there's something really cool that happens when every single workout, and this is leading to, but every single workout falls within this achievable and productive range where it makes you excited to get back on the bike. It's discouraging to go through and to fail workout after workout, right? Or to feel yeah. like you're just not being strained enough with the workouts. Okay. And this makes sure that it's always like well calibrated to you. It's super cool and uh, how it works the ramp test. Yeah, big time. And I just want to I just want to jump in here and say if anybody thinks it sounds really complicated, it is, but at the end of the day what this means for you is 
we, you get to see the progress that you're doing, where you're putting in the work. And a lot of the things that we've been talking about on the podcast and encouraging our athletes to do, um, it's going to be automated in the system. So a lot of these bumps in the road that you might've experienced where, you know, it was a matter of having to listen to your body and kind of figure out where you need to be. This system actually does it for you. So even though what we're talking about right right now sounds complicated, what adaptive training does is this, it makes it just automated, easy, and you don't have to do anything. It's going to do it for you. And Nate's going to get in a little bit more detail on that, but just remember it's, it's from the, from the standpoint of how this is going to make your life, it's going to make your life easier, less complicated Mm -hmm. and easier. (laughs) What it feels like is the right workout every time. Yes. That, and that's honestly just what it feels like. And that's as easy as it is to use. Like all this stuff that we're talking about, we're, we're, show, we're revealing the curtain, we're lifting the curtain and showing you everything right. behind. But when you train, it just feels like the right workout every time. The goal is, and this sounds funny, but is to clone Chad. So if you had, <laughs> I mean, if after every workout, you could have a little quick chat with Chad and he, and you, he found out something and he's like, okay, I'm going to adjust your training plan. Blah, 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 blah. But Chad also had the knowledge of a hundred million workouts in his brain of how that can then adapt and move people around. That is, that is the, what the goal is. And, um, uh, that's the, uh, the long-term goal on this absolutely is to beat a human coach for picking workouts. And I believe that what we're, uh, announcing today beats a lot of them. I don't have the data that's going to beat everyone, but in all situations, um, but we're going to try our best to get there. Uh, and I think for, I think it beats a lot of coaches. Sorry, coaches. I still love you for skills and accountability and all this sort of stuff. Okay. So going back, there is, uh, talking about the levels. Now inside the levels, we know the progression and we know what level you are inside of it. Now, one issue we've had, and we have, we have a lot of data on this. It was horrible. People would sign up for trainer road. They would do the ramp test. And then they would do this workout called Abbott. And Abbott was the, it was like two A's in a row or a B and it was right at the top of the workout list. It was alphabetical. It was alphabetical. (laughs) So we, they did that. Like, oh, it's the first one. That is like a level nine anaerobic workout and it would destroy people. It was so hard. And then we would see in the data, oh, they did one workout Abbott and they left trainer road. And then people go trainer road is too hard because they were expecting every workout to be achievable for them at whatever their fitness level is. And this is our fault because we did not put guardrails on it, right? We gave you just a bunch of knives and we're like, you go for it. You figure out the knife you want in that situation. Um, the training plan was, uh, better, but the workout library had no context And IF and TSS, although good in some ways did not give you enough information to make these choices intelligently. And it's hard to commute. I mean, it's really hard. Have you ever tried telling someone that what intensity factor is, who's never been into power training stuff. It's very hard to explain. So what we do is, uh, we've categorized all of our workouts. Now this is a dynamic categorization for you. And we have four different levels. I think it's four. So we have one is achievable. This is anything that's below your current level in that zone An achievable workout. That's like money in the bank. It's it's, it might be a little bit hard, but it's not one of those really stressful ones. You can do it. Um, the plans will have achievable workouts on them. These are like kind of, uh, it, don't feel bad about doing achievable workouts. You're getting something done. They're good. The next one is called progressive. Progressive means you are by doing this, you are pushing your level forward, but it's in a, uh, progressive productive manner. It's productive, isn't it? Yeah. Productive. Is yeah. The level. I always keep calling it. We had different internal names, so I keep calling it the wrong thing. <laughs> productive. The workout after that is called stretch. Now a stretch workout, you probably have all heard of this is where you might be thinking like John did, Hey, I feel extra good today. I want to do something a little bit more and you can attempt to stretch workout. We're not going to really, uh, you know, prescribe it to you, but if you want to, you can, and then our system will learn faster because you then achieve that stretch workout. After that, there is breakthrough breakthrough is many levels above your current level. Um, if for some reason you think everything is wrong for you, you can achieve a breakthrough workout and then, uh, move forward. And then we have not recommended after that. That's for many levels and we not recommended. Those are our, those are our, 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 our rails. So now what happens is when new users come in, uh, we're gonna talk about train now and the training plans for a second, but at least in the workout list, there is some not recommended. You can see ones that are achievable, which ones are uh, productive for you. And that really helps. Uh, I'm gonna talk about workout profiles next or, mm-hmm. 
You, okay, can we move to workout profiles? Sure. Okay, I'm going yep. to share my screen. And uh, hopefully this all works correctly. I've never done this live on the internet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are, we have a new, uh, one more level of profiling our workouts. So let me go into VO2 max. VO2 max, there's a, a lot of different ways. There's short shorts, there's sustained uh, float sets. And inside of a uh, workout, inside of a energy system, a progression side of that, it's very different to do a workout that's uh, like this, which is, uh, what is this, 30, 30 on, 30 off, versus a traditional one where it's a long ramp. So we have uh, categorized all of our, what is it, 1,400 workouts or something that we have. So you can come in here and you can say, well, here are all the on-off workouts. Those will load, and then they're, they're by progression. So the easiest one, Sleeping Beauty minus five, and then as you go down, you can see more levels and more workouts. Um, you can uh, mark them on the side to see all the, uh, the levels if you wanna see what the level eights could look like, the duration, but also the difficulty. So now I can say, hey, today if I wanna do a VO2 max on off and choose productive, it will show me all of those in order. So based on my current levels, this now shows all the workouts that would be productive for me and I can do more you know, filtering by duration, that sort of stuff. This feature that I'm talking about right here, this is more for what we call like data scientists. There's another persona that we call just tell me what to do. And I'm going to show you, or we're going to show you in a little bit. If, if you don't have to know any of this stuff, I'm kind of just explaining the details. We're just going to give you workouts that are good for you. Uh, but if you really want to get into it, you can look at it. And I want to tell everyone too, the difference between a four, 4.5 and a 5.1 like you can feel it, right, gang? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Substantial. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if I wanted to too, I could say, "Where are all the sustained BO2 max that are productive for me?" Mm -hmm. Those will come up, and these are very different workouts. But this is, uh, you know, last week we were talking about, or two weeks ago, searching for over unders, and I was like, "Oh, there's such a good way to do over unders." Um, but now I can open up threshold, click on over unders, and I can have a, well, I'm going to turn off productive and I can have a complete list from easy to hard of what those levels are. Now, mm -hmm. one thing I want to, I want to be clear here is that not all combos are possible. So if you want a, a threshold workout that is two hours long in a level one, it's probably not in our system because the, the, just the fact that it is so long, there's no easy workout for that. Okay. So, or you want a, a four hour endurance ride that is a level one, that's just not possible. Uh, so if you see holes in it, that is why, uh, but you can still move through and see all this stuff. So this part workout profiles, it's a very small part of it, but it, it is needed to build these progressive systems inside of training plans and to use the new train now feature. Yes, Amber. Yeah, I just want to reemphasize that when you look at this list and you see these labels of achievable and productive, that's achievable, achievable for you on that day, productive for you on that day. So different people at different points in their training plans are going to see different labels on possibly the same workout because your fitness is going to be changing throughout your own training plan and somebody else's fitness is going to be different from yours. So depending on, so whether or not a workout is achievable, productive stretch or breakthrough for you is going to depend on where you are in your training plan and what your, your individual progression levels are in the moment. So all of this stuff is going to change real time as you're progressing through your plan and it's going to be individual to you. Exactly. So let's, that's a great segue, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> Into training that's plans. <laughs> Here is a problem with well, two problems. The first problem with our training plan is. Um, our current training plans are if you miss something, the next week gets harder. And this has been, um, I always describe to people like if we're doing squats with 200 pounds on our backs and it crushes you, we're like next week we're doing 225, then we're doing 250 <laughs> and you could have manually have adjusted it and repeated workouts before, but because you get, what you do is you, uh, miss that progression and it's a little, you miss a step in the progression because you failed it. And it might've been just because you had a bad night's sleep. It could have been because uh, you didn't have time to finish the workout. You got busy, right? So now what happens inside of that is your, based on your ramp test and your progression levels, it's a custom training plan for you. But then as you go through it, it is constantly adapting to your performance. So if you miss a workout, it will make sure that you, uh, that it gets you the correct workout after that, even with the amount of space and time between the workouts. It's very cool. Yeah, John. 
Yeah. And so I'm going to apply some context to this. So you work a really hard day, right? And you're completely exhausted. This is another way that it will be adjusting this. And you can't do your workout for one reason or another, or you fail the workout. Once again, it's going to, this, that same thing is going to happen of not making you just jump up to the next rung on the ladder for the next workout. It will adjust for that. So I just saw that, that question come through on the live stream. And I figure a lot of people probably have a question like that. And that's how this addresses those sort of problems right there. It's super cool. It's not up to you to filter through and find those workouts. That's, mm -hmm. this is what this system does. It makes sure you get the right workout that you need at that time. Yeah. So everything I just talked about with workout profiles, levels, stretch, <laughs> breakthrough with adaptive training, literally it just comes up and says adaptions. You can click yes or accept always. So if you don't care about the details, you click accept always and it, your plan just always updates automatically. Like someone was in there changing it for you based on your performance. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to give a quick high level comment on this. So the way it works is we're going to check, we're going to check in with what's going on with your plan almost every day, at least every scheduled workout. And we're going to check and see, has something happened? How did the previous workout go? Where are your progression levels right now? Have they changed? And do we need to adapt your upcoming workouts? And if we do, you're going to get an automatic adaptation. And so your plan, your, your training plan is co we're constantly checking your training plan and we're constantly updating it for you. And you, you, you can decide how you want to do it. You can either accept those adaptations or not, or auto accept them and it'll just automatically update, but it's going to be constantly adapting to exactly what's going on with you as an individual in your life, which is amazing. So again, this is like, we're, we're trying to, these are things that we have tried to empower athletes to do for themselves, but now we're going to be able to do this automatically for you within your training plan with adaptive training as a system. It trains you as an individual. That's the, that's the, that's the cool part, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, for those who are joining us now, there is a link in the chat and, uh, mm -hmm. in that link, you can get a direct launch to our, uh, a direct link to our launch video that kind of explains this very quickly with Chad's, uh, glorious voiceover. It was so good. Thunder and Inside honey. baseball. We had all these other voiceovers <laughs> and we're like, we should do it. And second, um, our website is currently down because people are hugging it so much, but the team is working on it. I'm sure they are freaked out, uh, but we appreciate the hug. Um, Aaron, did you have something as a, before I move into the next thing? Okay. So now next we want to talk about our training interruptions. Now this is the big part. Uh, this is really cool. You know, Amber, why don't you just, you describe this, you built it. <laughs> you built, uh, so Amber, by the way, built a lot, a lot of this. So I really didn't do much. My team did so well, my team, and yeah, a lot of, there, there were multiple teams working on this collaboratively behind the scenes. So there's one really cool thing around here is there is a lot of brain power and it is mm. so much fun to work in this environment. But what we've done is there's a couple of different ways that we can handle mistraining. So, right. When you're planning out your next couple months of training, chances are, you know, that there's going to be some time where you can't train either. Cause you have a work function, you know, maybe someday soon, some of us can have vacation again, <laughs> but if you have any planned time off, when you put that in your plan, our logic will adapt your training plan automatically around that time off. And then if you have, and so that's kind of the proactive way that we do this, we can anticipate plan time off and we can adapt around it. So you no longer have to make those changes manually in your plan. And then we can also reactively adapt your, adapt your plan. So if you have some unexpected time off, whether, you know, you just had a really stressful day, maybe you had an unexpected scheduling conflict, you couldn't do your workout. Uh, maybe you had to do a different workout. Our logic will detect that and we will update your training plan accordingly. So you don't have to go in having missed a workout and get on the forum or ask us on the podcast. Hey, what do I do? I just missed, you know, this many workouts on this volume plan. Nope. It's done. We handle it for you and you just go on your merry way so that, and this, this is how it is, right? This is where the rubber meets the road. Life is not perfect. We don't, you know, we can't control all these different factors in our lives. We have to roll with the punches sometimes. And that can be really stressful because there's the, stress of knowing you didn't do your workout. And then there's the added stress of, okay, well, what do I do now? Well, we're going to take that stress away and we're going to give you exact, we're just going to get you back on track because life happens. That's okay. It doesn't mean that you can't progress and meet your goals. You just get back on track when you can. And that's what the system does for you. 
And to recap this and, and, and thanks, Amber, you just mentioned, I may be out of a job now because you're just not going to send podcast questions anymore, but um, <laughs> seriously, what's the podcast going to be about now? I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Jonathan's bike Here's sponsors. A chat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't think I can so, handle two hours of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might get pretty rough. Might have to change it to an afternoon slot too, instead of the morning. But, um, so with this though, I want to recap something that Amber just said that's super important. Really common question that we get. I just missed this workout. How do I adjust my training plan? I have this time that I'm traveling for business or for work or something else. How do I adjust my training plan? All of this now adjusts. It does it proactively when you schedule that time off and reactively when you just miss it and it was totally unexpected. So rejoice everybody that is adjusting. The way that it adjusts once again, isn't just by like taking a chunk out of your training plan. You know, plan builder will lay out this, this linear project or trajectory for you. And it doesn't just cut that out. Just like Nate said, it's not going to expect you to jump that gap. It's right. going to bring you down at the appropriate levels uh, based on the time off that you have and based on the athlete yeah. that you are. Yeah. And, and one of the really cool benefits that we've actually seen in our internal testing with this is not only does it take the stress away of, oh my gosh, what do I do? But it also increases your confidence because you can see, even if you miss a workout or two, that you're still progressing. You can watch how your levels are changing and you can see how you can still progress even when things get off track for a short period of time. And that's an amazing part. I mean, we all know that the, the mental emotional side of this is really, really powerful. And this is an unexpected benefit that we saw here too, was not only we were taking away the stress, but you, you get this awesome confidence of being able to see all of the progress that you're making and to know that if you miss a workout or two, all is not lost. You haven't just lost all of that effort. It hasn't all just gone to waste. You can actually see the money in the bank and you can mm -hmm. see those deposits adding up over time. And it's so awesome. And I mean, I mean, this happened to me before you take 10 days off because of a trip and your workout coming back, you're like, oof, it's like <laughs> twice as hard as it was before you left and you haven't trained this learns from that. And there is a, uh, your energy systems will degrade over time. Like they aren't stuck there because your fitness, I mean, wouldn't that be nice if your fitness just stayed where you were, <laughs> that'd be totally cool. But then the system then reflects that. And, uh, we'll talk about ML and a little bit with that, but the cool part you might be saying, well, why do I have to put this data in, in the future? Why wouldn't I just, you know, miss it? And then it would adapt. It does two things. Um, well, one, there's different types. There's uh, like time off or sickness, and both of those drive our machine learning. But also what we're going to talk about in a second is machine learning FTP prediction by plan block, which is so cool. And so what we can do is figure out based on where your blocks are, we have a better prediction of what your FTP will be after not just that block, but many blocks. Uh, get your performance based on a whole bunch of stuff, which we're going to get into. That's a little teaser. Uh, we haven't even got into any of the back end system of how this is all possible, but it's going to happen. Um, okay. What are we going to move to next train now? Is that where we should go? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So, let's do it. So what we have now, we have a new system. We have progressions, we have levels, we have workout pro profiles. And if you're using plan builder, you have adaptive training, uh, where it will adapt your workout. You have a dynamic plan. But there is a large portion of people, including, I think everyone actually falls into this sometimes in their life, where you don't want to follow a long training plan. Uh, you want to get more fit. You want to get faster. But you don't want to, you want to be just a little more um, flexible in your system. So what we have now is a new uh, feature called Train Now. And Train Now is built with that same back-end system with your levels, uh, the workout profiles, where you are in your progression. But what we do is just show you three workouts, an aerobic ride, a, uh, a climbing, climbing ride, ride yeah. and an attacking. And for those who want to know in the back end, attacking is VO2 max anaerobic, climbing is threshold sweet spot, and aerobic is uh, endurance or tempo. And what you can do is you open the app, you say what duration of time you want to work out for. So it's defaulted to 60 minutes, but if you have 45 minutes, 30 minutes, you can choose a 30 minute workout and it will show you what level, what workouts are good for you for 30 minutes. You should be able to get on the bike within, I don't know, 10 seconds of opening the app, have a workout and start going without having to do all this stuff and picking these workouts and going through There's a little shuffle button if you want three other ones. But we found this is a great way to discover more workouts, but also just stay consistent. Um, cause that's really what the most important part is, is staying consistent. And if you miss a day, you just open up another one and you can kind of go what you feel like that is so much better than not training 
or to train mm -hmm. unstructured and just kind of writing how you feel about putting these together. Um, or to try to jump really, in and do really something that's cool. way too Right, like jumping in and doing something that's way too hard and just oh. crushing yourself and then imploding and then not, you know, not wanting to get on the bike for a while. This is going to make it so that, you know, you jump in, as Jonathan said earlier, right workout every time. It's just, you know, you know, we're going to give you a workout that you can do. You can have confidence in that. And again, confidence building, consistency building. This is all, <laughs> this is all what we, <laughs> what we say over and over on the podcast, but now it's automatic and it's integrated in the system. Yeah, we're trying to yeah basically make this podcast boring. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's some personal stuff we can talk about. Um, there's always feelings. Feelings are good. There's a lot of feelings inside of cycling. So, uh, and train now is it's it's live in the uh, mobile app and in the desktop. There's been a whole thread about trying to figure out what this is. Uh, Right now, train now doesn't show the the levels and uh, the breakthrough part. Depending on what uh, we have an A/B test going, but in general, it's it's super cool. Um, it's a really fun way to work out. Mm -hmm. So now, now I want to talk about. Actually, no, let's show train now. Let's do it. Okay, I am sharing my screen now. Okay, so this is what train now looks like. I have three workouts. Uh, I have an endurance, a climbing, and an attacking. And you can see here it shows my level. So right here I have a productive, a productive, and achievable. What this blue A means on attacking for achievable means that this isn't going to be a, a workout that pushes me forward. And you know what? Some days you feel like an achievable. And this is, I, I can't stress this enough, it is better on those days that you have a high stress day, you're kind of tired. Um, you have choice. You could do a endurance ride. You could do a recovery ride, which we have those categories now too. We haven't mentioned that, but just doing an achievable workout where you feel like ah, I'm not hundred percent. It's money in the bank. Please do it. The system will learn. It is amazing. Don't feel bad about doing achievable work. Feel amazing. And sometimes too, it changes your mood, right? Like yeah. Amber, did you have this kind of stuff in your pro athlete life? Did you always have to like bang it as hard as you could? <laughs> no. And that this is when you, yeah, for sure. I, I have a lot of thoughts, sorry. And I'm really excited if anybody can tell. So I'm <laughs> tripping over my words a little bit here. But exactly, you don't necessarily need to be pushing the edge of the envelope every single day. That's just said, that's a recipe for disaster. What you want to do is you want some days to be pushing you and being productive, maybe even some days being stretched. But between those, you want to have these achievable days where you're maintaining and you're reinforcing some of those adaptations. You're not necessarily pushing for new adaptations, you're reinforcing and maintaining the adaptations that you've already achieved. And these achievable ones are great for this, especially, you know, when it comes to consistency. So if you're having kind of an off day or maybe you just had a really good productive workout or you just had a stretch workout that was really successful, you don't have to keep doing that at that level. You can dial it back a little bit. And if that's going to help you with consistency, so much the better. And this is definitely the case throughout my career. I mean, was never doing, you know, knock down, drag out, <laughs> fall off the bike days every day of a training plan. It's just not sustainable or realistic, and it's not actually productive for your fitness either. So, you know, don't be fooled by the, the achievable label. These workouts are actually, I mean, these workouts can be the, the bread and butter of progressing your fitness actually. So, um, they're just, they're, they're great all around workouts for maintaining. And then even just those days where you feel like, yeah, you know, I, I want to get on the bike. I want to do something for my health and my, my, my mental health, especially because we all know sometimes the bike is an escape and these are the workouts that are going to mm -hmm. just, you're going to get off the bike and you're just going to feel so good. You're just going to feel good. I might be doing sleeping beauty today, actually, because I'm sure I'll be, my brain will be di uh, like drained <laughs> from today's podcast, but I want to get some uh, VO2 in. So look at this. though. this is so cool. Let's say not everyone has 60 minutes. And this has been also another weakness of our training plans is mm -hmm. there weren't workouts that were less than 60 minutes, like in general. But if you want to jump on and let's say you want to do a 45 minute workout. Oh, here they are. And here's uh, right away. I could just jump into Mount Foraker at the correct level at the correct intensity for me. It would be productive and I get something done. Let's see. Is there any 30 minutes? There are 30 minutes. And two, again, life gets in the way. You can't train today. You see our training plan, you had a 90 minute workout scheduled. Ooh, what if I could jump in to something a little bit easier, which is so cool. Um, so if you want to see more, you hit shuffle. Uh, I can go up to 90 minutes. I got a little more time. The nice thing too, is because of the duration of the workout is taken into account in the levels. If you extend something to be longer, the intensity is always going to be a little bit lower because it's longer and it's harder to do. 
And that has all been ma manufactured. So if you are a level four in threshold for 60 minutes, you can do a level four for 90 minutes and it should feel exactly as hard. Okay. That's, that's very, uh, that's very important to know. Uh, I want to go talk about now about this, this feature that we should have named something better, but it's called harder, easier, longer, shorter. <laughs> Our internal name of it is we, Hells, and we should have came up with a better name of it. But it's called We now call it alternates. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's alternates. Yeah. Sorry, John. John, the communications guy. Don't call it Hells, call it alternates. <laughs> That's out of the so, bag. Inside the app, what we now have, uh, what we had before is you could see like the different versions of Beacon. So this is Beacon minus mm -hmm. one. And you could see, uh, so for those listening to the podcast, I am drilled into the app. I'm looking at Beacon minus one. And before, you could look at the other ones, but they weren't exactly like beacon minus two wasn't always slightly less beacon minus three wasn't always slightly less easier and it just wasn't titrated enough for what we wanted to do but now what you can do is you can click on alternates and you can see for this energy system what other workouts are productive for this uh duration and also with it what is this for one you might just say i want a little i've done this workout before i want another workout you can get another workout that achieves the same goal, but have some variety in your life, which is really awesome. But the other, really the, the, the better use case is for this day, you might say, I have a little more time or a little less time. So if that's the case, what you could do is say, I'm clicking on a drop down instead of 90 minutes, because of my schedule, I only have 75 minutes. I can't do this whole workout. So if I click on that, I get productive workouts in this workout profile for 75 minutes. And then you can start going. Another case is you say you might want a little bit harder, a little bit easier. So I could choose achievable. Here are all the achievable 75 minute workouts that are in here. Or what I could do is say, I'm actually feeling really good. I want to challenge myself and I'm going to go for a stretch workout. And if I choose stretch, I can make something a little bit harder and I can find all the 90 minute workouts that would actually progress my fitness faster. And I'm kind of testing myself inside of this. Um, this is super cool. It's. The ability to add your own RPE and how you feel to make small changes or because of your schedule without messing up your training plan. And again, the plan adapts moving forward in the future. Aaron, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so that is what we call work alternatives and train noun. It's so mm -hmm. cool. Do Nate, we have anything I, else? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to share on this. So uh, just to recap something that Nate said that's very important just because you have beacon on your calendar beacon minus one doesn't mean it's e easier but mm -hmm. here's the cool part about all this once again our system is looking at all the different workouts at the way it's been able to classify them with great precision to make sure that you get the right workout so it it will be it might look different but it's going to put the right fitness sprinkles into the right buckets so to speak mm -hmm. uh, so you still get <laughs> what you need accomplished at the end of at the end of the workout this is super so I think that these two features are going to be heavily used because all of us know that life serves us lemons at times. So we make lemonade instead of just not doing anything with it and skipping the workout. Now we have great options to do that. And for train now, so many people, you know, train committing to a training plan is a big thing and it's tough for a lot of people. It gets way easier now with adaptive training because you don't have to hold yourself to a linear standard. Instead, it's constantly adapting the, tra the training plan to you. But train now is going to be awesome for so many people too. You can just drop in and you always have the workout. That's like exactly what you need. So it's, it can be, it's, it's, I'm super excited for both of those features. I think they're going to be very heavily used. So cheers to the team that made those. It's awesome. Okay. So do we want to talk more about the features or can we, we're good to go into the next part about how we built this. And we're going to talk about some more features too, in the upcoming features. Let's do it. Let's get into how we built it. Cause this is the exciting stuff. I like it. Okay. Nerdy stuff, but exciting. So how this is how we built it and we've been listening to you this whole time and we've been hearing all the the uh the things that you've requested of trying to improve and we knew that we had to make a highly individualized and customized system and the goal too was to make this system learn off itself and get better and better and better because there was no there's no way that we could build something static that could achieve the goals of making, you know, making cyclists faster, but also making the world faster. So I want to say three years ago, it would actually started a little bit before three, three years ago when we tried to do something, um, it didn't work. <laughs> we gave up on it. Uh, but 
I'm going to walk you through some of the, uh, the AI and data science that we are using on this. And we've had a team uh, for years working to move this forward. So first, what is AI and ML? Well, AI is a big branch, like AI is a whole bunch of stuff. That's called artificial intelligence, and it could mean many, many different things. But what we're using inside of this is called machine learning. And machine learning is uh, supposed to be able to connect complex things that a human could never figure out and come up with outcomes or predictions for that based on the complex set of data. Uh, what we have done, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain which part first, but what you do in machine learning is you give uh, the AI a data set and you say, okay, in this data set, here's what you're trying to optimize for and here's some data. And what it does is it looks at that and it starts to um, analyze the data and figure that out. And by what you, the, the signposts that you give for machine learning are called features. So a feature is something where you have a data engineer describe something about somebody's history or training and put that into like a cell. And then that then gets carried forward for that, I'm gonna use person or athlete because that's what we're talking about right now. And then it can say, how does this relate to the outcome? So for our, in our system, we have over a hundred features that we've written for everybody to describe what their training is and how it goes. And those features are totally proprietary because the, the advantage that we have is the data set of the plan versus actuals. Even the big companies like Garvin and Strava, they don't have the planned versus actual, which is extremely important inside of this, this data set. Uh, and two is what features you build, because you could have the same data set, but if you don't build the right features, you're never gonna get the data out. And we're also gonna talk about, uh, you might, you know, the, a common thing I've heard, and we'll get into it, but is, I'll just do it right now. As you say, well, you're trainer road, so it isn't all the data, just trainer road data. And when it isn't all just plans, because if it's just plans, then your, your ML and the smart people who think this will just show that only that the ML or that the, like your training plans work. Um, but luckily we have a very, very wide set of data. So as people one, as people sink their data in, we get their entire career and moving forward inside and outside rides. So we get to see you before you join trainer road. And then uh, less than half people follow our training plans. The other part, people do custom workouts. They're coached. They just pick their own workouts. That's a very good other set of tens and tens of millions of rides. Actually, we have over 100 million rides in our system now. Uh, I just checked. Congrats for us <laughs> hey. to be able to show that against. <laughs> and then another part of that is there is a large amount of you who you will use us during the fall and winter. And then during the summer, you have completely different training outside. And that is also a great way to learn about what makes the cyclist faster to have some of these different cases inside of it. So we are extremely aware of it. And we're going to talk about two of some different ways that we're going to get specific other type of data into our system, but it is, I can't stress this enough that we are extremely aware of it and cognizant of it. And we want to make sure that we don't just like solve our own problem, uh, because <laughs> of the data set we have. So, uh, so machine learning, you got the data, you're training it. And then what you do is you take that and you go against a different data set where you know the outcome and you test it. So you have a little bit of training data and then you have another set, uh, set of data and you say, well, how well did this work against it? And that's where you can add new features and you can say, did this improve the model or did this not improve the model? And for us, because ours is time-based and we have so much history in our system, we can step back and say, okay, let's start going in 2013 and we'll see We'll, we'll start running through data. This system will try to do things, either predict or classify uh, some kind of thing inside of our system. And then we have the actuals of what it was. And then we can say, oh, did if we add, let's say, uh, six weeks TSS average, that's an easy one to think of, did that then increase or decrease the accuracy of the model? And so what our data, data engineers do is they're building features all the time. They're running it through it and they're keep trying to increase the accuracy of the model against that data set uh, which is super duper cool. So one thing, uh, do, does that make sense? ML yeah, people this is for, well, I'm not an ML people, but that makes sense to me. So whatever that's right. worth. <laughs> so. Okay. So work the, a key part of this, which is, it sounds simple, but it was hard to build is a, our workout classifier. And what this is, is we needed to know 
what workouts you did as prescribed and which ones you didn't. And it's not just a yes or no, is that what our classifier does is it actually looks and can tell if you even struggled at a workout because there's not just pass fail, right? We can also tell if you super passed it because all of those things influence the system moving forward. It can tell if you just ran out of time with a little help from a survey, but if you, how many times have you done it where you do a workout and you backpedal for 30 seconds or you're doing 30 30s, you miss one. Do we want to air quote, like, you know, mark it as something like a, this is bad to say, but it's not a failure, but it, in our internal system, it's called that. Um, or is it just a struggle, right? And based mm -hmm. on where we push you forward and getting some feedback from you, some qualitative feedback that then teaches us. So what we did to build that is we classified and we had a human go through poor Brandon. I think it was Brandon. Some other people, it was <laughs> Brandon all on the, yeah, the data science team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They looked at workouts and said, Hey, what is, uh, what do we think this is? And they would classify it. And you take that data set, you then run it against a larger data set. You look at the outcomes and then it got to the point where, um, we have many people inside the company look at workouts and maybe eight would say this way. And two would say this way, because a lot of it's subjective when you get really fine details to it, but the ML was always in the majority case. And then the other, the other two would be like, actually, I do think it's that. So we got it better than what we think we could do as a human. And then it can then push that forward. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's that part of it. Um, I'm trying to think about where to jump next. I'm not even following the doc at all. I'm just talking. Oh, let's yeah. do an image share of the super pass. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for so Aaron, by the way, for, for running all this behind the scenes. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these are examples of different types of workouts and what their outcomes are. So a super pass is, uh, you've probably seen it where you, you might've experienced it where you turn the work up out, work up, work out up, and everyone is a little bit harder. And what we need to do is we need to learn from that. So that way we can feed that into our system and able to analyze your performance and move you forward. If you just nail it uh, exactly right. So what I'm showing is sorry for the super pass for those on the podcast is it is a workout where you're above target, um, for all your intervals or for some of your intervals mm -hmm. pass is you are right on there. You know, everything's just nailed perfectly. A struggle is a, uh, is where it is a little bit lower on some intervals. Let's say you turn an interval down, you still did it. Like if you turn it down 2%, yeah, yeah, Oh no, I was just gonna say, yeah, the exact, I was, I was just gesturing as you were talking, but yeah, I mean, sometimes you're gonna struggle and it doesn't mean that it's not money in the banks, but yeah, please keep going. <laughs> Sorry. <about> exactly. <laughs> then we have a, a failure outcome, which is, and we should probably not even say in our internal ones, you didn't fail. It's just, mm -hmm. it's mo still money in the bank but you didn't do the workout as prescribed. Okay. And then there's the cut short and the cut short is for some reason in the middle of the workout, you had an issue. And again, we're going to talk about some of the surveys afterwards to be able to better move this data forward. But this is what, uh, this is how our machine learning classifications do. So inside of this, um, there's a few, there's a lot of more information that we've built to make sure this happens. And there's a lot of information too, that we're going to come on. It's going to come in. So we have our, actually I'll just talk about it right now. We have the workout surveys. Do we, can we put up a, a picture of a workout survey and what workout surveys are, are after your workout, what we need is a one through five, how hard or how did this effort feel? And this is, um, it's very simple. Think of it as RPE. And this isn't relative to that effort. This is just how, how hard did it feel? So an aerobic ride is usually pretty easy or moderate and a view two max ride is usually hard, very hard or all out. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the choices. It's easy, moderate, hard, very hard or all out. And why do we need this? Because if you're doing a two by 20 sweet spot and that was an all out effort for you, even though you did it as prescribed and we said it's a pass, we need to adjust your training on the other fact like john said if you do by two two by 20 sweet spot and you say it's easy we need to adjust your training on that too mm -hmm. and what this does is this allows us we can feed this into our ml2 and detect patterns for you um, i'm thinking um uh, you know burnout and that sort of stuff too but also really change those next workouts to make sure you're on the right progression as you're moving forward in certain workouts like again we don't want 
every workout to be all out. Very, very, I mean, ramp test should be all out. Uh, other than that, I don't think we're ever going to have you do all out every time. Uh, races should be all out. But there'll be some days of the week and some workout profiles where maybe we're targeting hard and very hard. And other ones, we're targeting uh, moderate. And if you're not in that RPE, we're going to adjust it for you. And this is another part of data that I think will push our data set ahead because it's extremely, this, this is extremely important in order to do some of the FDB predictions and all the kind of things that we want to do in the future. Um, Aaron, could you switch to, cause we have two other types of surveys that can be served to you too, depending on the different outcomes, right? Nate? <clears throat> um, yes. Yeah. So probably uh, good to cover those ones. So Aaron, if you want to flip over to that one, go ahead. Okay. So mm -hmm. on this, when this is super duper important too, uh, when you struggle with the workout and you don't do it as prescribed, we need to know what the reason was, what was the primary reason? And oftentimes it's a multitude of reasons. But what our system needs to know is what was the, uh, the primary reason. Let me walk you through these. You've probably felt all of these before, right? <laughs> Every one of us. So you felt that the first one is intensity. And we've all done this. The workout was just too hard for you, right? And that is the main reason. There's nothing else going on in your life. It's just the intensity. The next one is training fatigued. I mean, how many times have you done a workout? You think you should be able to do it. But you are just, it wasn't too intense. You just feel drained inside because you've been training so much recently. That will mm -hmm. also then feed into our system. Three, nutrition. You ever have it where you skip breakfast, you try to do a workout that's like sweet spot and you fail. You're like, I would normally do it. I just messed up my nutrition or maybe you didn't eat. Doing that will also help us learn. And hopefully, uh, actually we're gonna serve you education along with this to help improve those things. Uh, next one is sleep. You didn't sleep last night, right? You stayed up really late for work or for school. You got two hours sleep. It's bad. Bit, a big podcast, something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, kids, <laughs> you're, you're a new mom or dad or new parent. And uh, being a uh, lack of sleep is real, right? And that needs to be known so that we can adjust. Um, stress or motivation. That's big. I would say the podcast day is more of a stress day um, or you have low motivation of the reason why you did it. And I've totally done that too, where... I could achieve a workout. Actually, this happened yesterday. I started a workout. We had a lot of stuff going on and I was just like, nope, <laughs> this is a stress or motivation uh, uh, problem with me. It's just not my day and I don't have to gut through it. Um, mm -hmm. Sick. We want to know when you're sick. Uh, that's important. And that's a whole nother reason why you might, uh, might not do a workout. Sure. It seems like there's a lot of reasons. It's very easy to go through these quickly uh, as you glance through it. Um, injury. Mm -hmm. Injury is one of them. Uh, if you fail a workout because of injury, we need to know that. Or uh, device issue. So if for some reason your power meter ran out of batteries in the middle of the workout, well, you didn't really fail it. You just had a device issue and we don't, we know, we want to keep moving you forward. And then you can also type something in. So mm -hmm. what our system will do and our employees is as you type in other things, if we miss something and not in one of these major buckets, we can add more buckets inside of it. But this is, again, this is very important training data. And this is what you would tell if coach Chad was coaching you and you, you missed, or you had an issue with a workout, Chad would say, well, what's going on? And if you said, I just didn't sleep well last night, Chad could adjust based on that. Yes, Amber. Right. One of the cool things about this. So our system is keeping track of all this in the background, but the other part of this, that's going to be awesome is we'll, we'll display these back to you. So when you go back and you look at your training, you'll be able to visually see for the workouts that you were struggling with, what were the reasons? And it's going to help you to, to perhaps pick up on some patterns. And you might say, man, you know, I haven't been feeling that great. And you go back and you look at your training. You're like, oh, you know, 10 out of the last 15 workouts, I wasn't sleeping well. Maybe I really need to focus on my sleep for the next couple of weeks. And these are going to be things that are going to help you learn about yourself as an athlete at the same time as our models are learning how to adapt your training better for you. So it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a, a, a new kind of window into your own training. Um, and again, like, like Nate said, we're going to be offering a lot of educational material around this too. So that if you start to find some points where you're consistently struggling, maybe with nutrition, for example, that's something that we can help you to try to get on top of. So it, it, it no longer is a limiter for you. Yep. Um, and, yeah, and for all, for all the value that these surveys contribute, this is basically, we have all this fancy machine learning that's going on in the background. So all this analysis takes place, but this is your opportunity to assess how you felt, how it went for you. So this is the mm -hmm. subjective end that's missing in so many situations that we now have access to.
Right. Yeah. So, and this is an important point to make. You could ask the question, well, will this spiral my training out of control, right? Like if I'm just like overachieving, overachieving, could it somehow take me out of control? And this is the built-in system of checks and balances with objective performance data analyzed by ML and subjective feedback provided by you based on how the workout felt and the reasons behind that. Those, that's the system of checks and balances that always keeps it within the range that it needs to be. It's, it's incredible. It, and it's so, it sounds weird, but it's so fun to train with it because of that, because yes. <laughs> then all the workouts are just always calibrated. Like I said before, and um, there's one other too, because we talked about one reason or one reason or another, why you may have failed the workout, but also cutting the workout short is another reason, mm -hmm. uh, to serve a, to throw a survey up. Uh, maybe Aaron can put that one up. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. So, uh, if, if we can detect, it's very easy. You don't need machine learning for this. If you didn't do the whole workout, uh, and then what we have is, you know, I, I, the option of why you ended a workout early is just time. I didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. How many times is yeah. how many times, how many times it happen where you missed the last interval because you have an appointment or, you know, your kids or dinner and you just, uh, you just don't do it. And that too is important for us to know because that is so different than, Hey, I didn't have enough time versus. I am, my training fatigue is so high right now that I can't finish this workout versus I just, got, I have a five o'clock appointment and it's 4.55 and I better get off right now to hit my Zoom call. Uh, right. So yeah, do you have anything to say about that, Amber? Uh, no, I, you nail it. Yep, sorry, Chat? I'm gesturing a lot over here because I'm excited. I, I just <laughs> wanna add one point to the, for, for the people who are listening who aren't seeing these surveys, we're listing a lot of options in each of these surveys, but first off, you're gonna get served one survey based on what happened, secondly, mm -hmm. Each of these surveys is super cleanly designed. I think the first time you get the survey is probably gonna take you 10 seconds to read all the options. Every time after that, it'll probably take you all of three seconds to pick which one and then move forward. It's one and click. That's like, that's the, that's the thing to yeah. remember about this. It doesn't add to your training experience. <laughs> this isn't adding load to, to your no. training, right? This is, it's super easy. Yeah. We're all about the, reducing cognitive load over here. <laughs> yeah. And what you should be getting too is the vast majority, especially the new system is just how did it feel? So one through five, how did it feel? And you get going, uh, mm -hmm. in our own system, 6% of our train road rides, I believe someone all on, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 6% of all train road rides are failures where they don't do it as prescribed. And those are, if you take the amount of like, whatever your correct level is, they are heavily weighted to people doing workouts above their current level that are too high. So mm -hmm. as this new system, um, as you use this new system, it should adapt to training. The amount of failure should get a lot low, lower, unless mm -hmm. you know, you do, it does happen though, right? Like, especially the time one, it happens for a lot of people. Sure. So how I want to, I want to set expectations for this too, because there are, if you're not in the industry and understand machine learning, in AI, which you might think of as the movies, where you think there is this singularity where we will turn on an AI and it will flip. then <laughs> like flip and then the whole world will change because this thing will automatically learn and move forward. Uh, Skynet. Yeah. If a singularity happens, in my opinion, we will all be dead within a few hours. Like this, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> it will say these humans are not good for its own existence and it will do yeah. it. I don't think that's happening. You can think of this though, like self-driving cars, which is another thing I think in 20 years, it's inevitable. Well, none of us will drive self-driving cars where it's, it is a stepped improvement where it is constant and it keeps getting better and better and better. So for us, what we want to do is other things that we need to bring into the system to make it react faster and make that model more accurate uh, that we're looking at. And it's a really cool thing is we can bring this data in. And if it doesn't make the model more accurate, like there's no correlation with, you know, and this is with so many age, training history, gender, all these sort of things. If there's no correlation for us, that's pretty good. Uh, one, the ML won't use it or it won't be influenced by it, but it's a pretty good understanding that maybe in a larger sense of science, that this isn't as, uh, impactful as we've thought, but some stuff we want to do sleep data. Uh, I'd love to have automatic recorded sleep data for people. And that's one thing we want to bring in resting heart rate. So resting heart rate in the morning, not everyone can do it, but for those who can do it, that'd be great data, HRV data. Um, we haven't talked about that very much in the podcast because we believe the science is a little bit mixed, but bringing into this system, 
to have HRV data and then tie it to quantitative and qualitative data about your performance, ooh, and the ML will really be able to, uh, we think, pick up stuff in there. And the last one, this is something I'm so excited for, is uh, menstrual cycle tracking. So, mm -hmm. and how your menstrual cycle impacts your training. And not just for everyone, but also for what birth control you're on, um, right. if you're in menopause, uh, your period, because what happens is, I guess, Amber, you should explain this, but um, before you, <laughs> I, I, I got to normalize it. I'm going to normalize it, Amber, having men talk about a period, because that's also very, uh, it's like a stigma and not enough training companies do it. So I'm going to say a little bit, Amber, and you can take it from there if you want to. But generally, what we want to prove in our data set, but generally the thought is, right before you start your period, that is when you should have more of a uh, recovery, lower intensity workouts. And then based on your hormones, when you start your period, that is actually when you want to have harder workouts, you're more like a guy inside of that, and you can ha handle more intensity. So we have the new system with levels and progressions, and we can dynamically change it. Um, we actually started building the, um, it's MCT for short, menstrual cycle training or uh, tracking inside mm -hmm. of our system. It's pretty far along, but that is something we want to launch so that you can and we're going to pull it in from Garmin too, where you can track your menstrual cycle, you track symptoms, and then you can then we can look at that and use ML to figure out uh, is this true for you or for a cohort of this birth control, something like that. Did I get it right, right Amber? Yeah, I mean, it's is it true for you right now? Is is what was true for you last year still true for you? These are things that we want to talk about, and you know, everybody is different. So when you start to dig into the effect of the menstrual cycle on training, yes, there are some some good some clear patterns that have emerged in in the science where certain hormones have some influences on training, but they don't influence everybody to the same degree or in the same way. A lot of women really struggle with their RPE around ovulation, for example, which is really different from women who struggle with PMS, the premenstrual, uh, premenstrual syndrome, when you have that kind of hormone shift right before your period. So these are all open questions that are really hard to drill into for just a general, po at, at a population level. And then the other thing is a lot of women athletes are on birth control. So there's, you're dealing with, you know, irregular cycles, different types of birth control. If any women listening who are on birth control, you know, every single one is going to affect you in vastly different ways. Um, and we know that that's probably affecting your training as well. The degree to which it's affecting your training is probably different too. And what age you are. Some women are perimenopausal and we can't even, you know, when we're talking about master's plans, for example, when you're looking at women, what's the, what, what constitutes masters? Is it perimenopause? Is it menopause? Because we know that that's going to hit at a lot of different ages. And so is it your chronological age that's going to determine how this is affecting your training? Is it your hormone levels? I mean, so there are so many open questions here that we can, you know, what we'd like to do is be able to get this into our machine learning models. And what adaptive training is doing is it's creating the infrastructure and that's going to allow us to be able to do this. So we'll be able to see if there are some population level patterns that we can detect. And if not, we can hopefully be able to drill down on wh what what's gonna be the best way for you to adapt your training. Because maybe the hormone shift for you right before your menstrual cycle isn't affecting you to the degree that you need to alter your training. And maybe altering your training means that you're leaving something on the table. We don't know that yet, but that's something that we really wanna find out. and and. And I think that that's going to be what's really, really going to help a lot of our women athletes. Go ahead, John. Yeah. One thing to, that I want to clarify on this too, is that this is all the sort of data that you would be able to opt in on sharing with the system if right. that's what you wanted. Right. So this is a, I want to make the, that, that clear. It's not like we're already collecting data without anybody's permission. Yeah. On no, that no. Stuff, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. And this, this kind of data is really, really sensitive. And we've talked about this and, um, you know, when we get to a point where we'll be able to pull this in and, I'll allow our athletes to track this with their training. Uh, we'll make sure that we have some really significant safeguards in there in terms of protecting the privacy of your data because this stuff, you know, it's personal stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Chad. Chad, did you have something? Yeah. So uh, Nate went over a few of the features that we want to add. And one of them that didn't get mentioned was steps. So whereas MCT mm -hmm. is oh, yeah. clearly specific to females, steps is yeah. broad to all of us. And what's super interesting about that, and it's just a demonstration of all the things that we might have access to down the road is you know, the, the difference between a hundred steps day and a 10,000 steps day. And these things happen commonly, right? How does it impact the ride you have later that day? What are the effects based on the ride you had the day prior? I mean, there's all things we can start to look at, look at patterns and say, 
this person did 10,000 steps this day, then they did a sweet spot workout and they quit the workout mm -hmm. early and reported fatigue as the reason. Well, now we can start to say on the days where your step counts high, I mean, th these are possibilities down the road. Yeah. No, we, we already are, Chad, but we just don't have the step data. So I, what my hypothesis is, is if you have a step data out of normal, I believe that, like mm. we're going to write a, so I'm, I'm doing too much, uh, too many, uh, <laughs> oversharing, to bulging too much. oversharing, but I'm too late <laughs> about what I believe it is. If you are a 2000 step person and you have a 10,000 step, I believe that will then influence your training. Or I think the other way too, if you have a very minimal step, that might be a precursor to, uh, failing workouts in the future For and sure. our prediction around that. Uh, that's, that's what I think, but that's an example of a feature. So you can just, you can just tell like that little discussion about how important it is to engineer these features, right? Because we just say just the number of steps without looking at your history of the change of steps. Um, some people do 10,000 every day and it's no big deal for them. Some people do a lot less and a 10,000 day would be huge for them. So mm -hmm. we're kind of trying to look at like differences between the, uh, the, the normalcy, mm -hmm. um, for the classification, what I want to talk about is inside and outside workouts, structured and unstructured workouts. So what we have today is if you do a train road workout or you do a structured trainer road workout outside, it works and we classify what we are currently working on now. And this, this is only internal. Um, this is not ready to, sh to share for everybody, but it's classifying unstructured outside rides. And what we want to do is if, uh, we want to get a level in a, uh, training zone or zones for an outside ride, for instance, let's you go outside. You just turn on your, your Garmin or Wahoo and you do two by 20 at threshold. And then you tack on four hours after that, which is, that would be a legit ride, but you're a beast. Yeah. <laughs> you're a beast. And our system today has the IF, the average power, um, the TSS, uh, you know, all of that kind of data, the duration. But what we want to know is, okay, we want to give you credit for the threshold in there. And we also want to give you credit for the endurance in there. And then that then can then adjust your rides more. And we understand there's a difference in a lot of people between not just power meters, but indoor and outdoor elevation, all of these things are being considered to put it into that feature when it's ready, uh, just to kind of, to tell people ahead of time. So that's, uh, again, I, my workouts internally get classified as this, um, but we're just trying to increase the accuracy of what we're doing with the model and to, to move that forward. Um, another cool thing that we do because we need a complete training picture for you. Uh, a lot of you train outside without a power meter, but we need to be able to get that stress to get a good, uh, we need to, uh, qualitatively measure that stress. So what a machine learning team's done is we have this huge data set of people training with a power meter and a heart rate monitor, right? So what we've done is we use machine learning and said, okay, here's this data set of someone who with a heart rate monitor and a power meter. And now try on a different set where we have both heart rate and power meter, but it tried to guess the TSS based on what the heart rate was for the workout. And then it has the actual outcome afterward. And now we've trained it. And what we have is, um, today is ML based heart rate. What's the marketing name for this? HRTSS. HRTSS. So if you do a workout without, uh, a power meter, this can then that TSS can be fed in because that has implications on TS or intensity and stuff that you've done. And that's really super cool. We tried using other algorithms that are like kind of public, but we found that our machine learning beat those and tightened it up. And of course it's not going to be ever as tight as a power meter. If you have a power meter that is better, but this kind of shores up some missing data pieces for us in order to move that few, uh, further. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. What is, where should we go next train? I, I think that, um, so we have some stuff to cover on the future features as well, but one thing I want to cover too, on the, on the data side of things, a, a few people have, have been like, well, this is a lot of data. And then they have like the standard big data fears. Um, Nate, we, we, we comply to GDPR regulations in terms of, of, of sharing or of, of privacy with data and everything else like that. Do you well, want to go over share, that really quick? Yeah. We don't share data with anybody. The only, the only thing that we share is if you specifically come into our system and you say, push my workouts to Garvin or Strava, that's like you authorized it, but we don't sell anything. Uh, we don't share anything. Our machine learning is all anonymized. It doesn't know who you are. Uh, 
all of that stuff super important for privacy. And then the GDPR, mm -hmm. for those who don't know, that is a very strict European privacy law stuff. And what we just did is said, hey, we're going to apply it to the whole world because uh, why not? I thought it was a good idea to GDPR and it made it easier for us because instead of having like, oh, if you're in the US, do all these sort of things. And if you're in Europe, do these sort of things. We just said, we'll do GDPR everywhere. And mm -hmm. um, that's made it easier too, as more countries come up with these strict privacy laws. But again, I want to be, and we're not sharing or selling this data with anyone. The only stuff is if you, you know, if you link, if you make your work up public and you share it to someone or you push it to Strava, people can see it there, but there's a nice uh, button under your profile that says private and then no one can ever see any of your stuff ever again, uh, mm -hmm. which is again, super duper important. Okay. So sure. now I want to talk about, uh, some other kind of future stuff. And then some things that are actually there right now, a hundred percent. One of our goals in the system is if you don't want to do a ramp test, you never have to do the ramp test again. Uh, you could kind of do that now. It's not automated, but I know some people, there's like, so, yeah, there's like cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dancing they're the honking right their now. horns in their cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can imagine this progressive system is, and I talked about it at, if you are a level eight at like a 300 FTP, well, then you're another level at 320 where we can then start you over in the progression and start you going forward. And that is, um, that is, it is internally. We can, you can do it by deleting your ramp test or changing your FTP, but it's not as automated as you want, but that is on the near term roadmap to do that. And the one thing I still like the ramp test because it gives you a very solid measurement of this is where you're at. And I am a data science nerd and I want to know that, <laughs> but also there is this, when you do a, um, you know, a recovery block recovery week, what happens there is we're not actually absolutely sure how much you're going to improve, mm -hmm. how much you're going to bounce back. So by doing the ramp test, we can kind of, we can adjust your training a little quicker, but we could also play on the conservative side and the surveys will adjust and you'll move forward after that. And I mean, that's a, it's still a great way to train. There's, there's, uh, well, we're going to hammer this in over the years. You don't have to be at the limit all the time, right? right? And you don't want to be at the limit all the time because that's going to lead to burnout long-term mm -hmm. and, uh, Next week too, we're going to do a, a bigger podcast and we're going to show even more data about our plans and what plans for which person and what kind of improvements you can get, uh, which is very exciting. But, um, I think it's just exciting too, to not have to do a ramp test. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think, uh, I think there's at least a few happy people in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> test, <yeah. laughs> that might be an understatement. <laughs> Testing's hard. Yeah, for sure. It is hard. Okay, so now I want to talk about FTP prediction. This is chef's kiss. Like, <laughs> yes, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so it's cool. pretty darn and, cool, man. <laughs> and uh, so what we built is based on the data. And again, remember, we have this data set of people doing only outside rides, uh, only outsides for years. Some people stay with Trainer Road, they suspend their account, they come back. We got the data for the outside ride. Um, train Road training plans no training plans, workouts before they ever did training plans at different ages. And what we've done now is we've used our machine learning, the same kind of technique to predict based on what's on your calendar, what FTP you will have at different times. And that's, we have, so we have all these features in, and this is, this is the jam, right? This is what everybody wants. And we know here's some caveats though. FTP isn't everything. Right. Mm -hmm. We talked about it before your ramp yeah. test result is not everything. And even your level within the ramp test, um, that's a lot better, right? Because if you're a level 10 anaerobic versus a level one anaerobic, completely different fitness. Mm -hmm. And we, and also that also brings into what is, uh, naturally brings into repeatability. So if you're a crit racer, it's not just all about your one minute power. It's how many times you can go hard for one minute cross country racer, very, very important but our levels automatically kind of build these things in. So this FTP prediction, what we've done then is we've chained blocks together. So at the end of a block, it gives you a range of what your FTP uh, is probably going to happen. And then as you do workouts, you do breakthroughs or stretch, or you, you miss a workout or you schedule vacation, that range changes about where it is. And this takes into account, you know, your training history, your age, your gender, everything we can think of. Plus we're going to bring in more stuff. And what we want to do is we want to narrow that window. 
to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the idea is um, we're never going to say, you know, in six weeks, your FTP is going to be X, but we're going to show, this is like retirement, a glide path. So mm -hmm. it's going to be somewhere in here. And then as you achieve your workouts and as things happen, it's going to get closer and closer and closer until you're the day before where we know it for sure about what your mm -hmm. performance is based on the levels and our progression system about what, what, uh, how fast you are. Just like retirement, you don't know where you're going to be 20 years from now, but the day before you retire, you you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's, it's where you're at, which is really super cool. Mm -hmm. So inside of this FTP prediction too, what we're doing is the idea of cohorts and individual models. So what cohorts, a fancy word just to say, like a group, a group of people. Mm -hmm. And so a cohort might be, um, 65 year old men or 65 plus or 60 to 65. Mm -hmm. And then it might be with this much training history too, or this much recent training history. And what our goal as a company is to take these FTP predictions. And then, and then when I say titrate, what I mean is just like filter. So filter into cohorts and see if that then increases the accuracy. So when you first start trainer road and you sign up and you're a 60 year old, uh, postmenopausal woman, we can better at predict your FTP and progress you through these systems and, uh, space intensity better than if you're a 22 year old man, which I think we all believe there's probably gonna be some differences in physiology there uh, about what they should do. So as we build those, and then, uh, the goal, we don't have this running today for FT prediction, but to run individual models and see if those models for you specifically beat the cohort or the general model, um, and that's where we want to go. So again, it's that step forward of how much can we improve? How much more accurate can we get? What other data can we get? And we bring in the system to get better and better and better. Uh, Amber, you, you had some uh, comments on this too. Yeah. So one thing that science, science has made clear is there's just, there, there is no single silver bullet solution that's going to work for everyone. And just like nutrition optimizing, really what it comes down to is adjusting levers and knobs. Um, and it's more about adjusting levers and knobs than it is discovering one perfect prescription. So with AT, what's really cool is we're going to be able to use the machine learning to look at how these different levers and knobs are going to affect outcomes for different people. And we can do that at the cohort level, um, looking at, again, different ages, training histories, genders, uh, looking at, you know, where you are in your menstrual cycle, looking at if you're perimenopausal, menopausal, these are all really cool things we'll be able to look at and then hopefully be able to also drill down on an individual level too. And what is, so what, what you'll see in, in, you know, and, and we've been guilty of this too. You, we previously had data sets where you have a study of 12 people and they do something. And what you look at is a, a, a large body of studies and some of it is mixed and some of it's not, but you look for the ones that all kind of go in the same direction. And then you build data on top of that and move forward. But my prediction is, and the Amber just alluded to this, it's going to be much more finely grained, much more nuanced mm -hmm. than that where we're not going to be able to take 12 college guys. Cause honestly, you look at it, it's always like 25 year old college men or 22, because <laughs> yeah. that is the, uh, that they want to get a quick buck for the study. <laughs> well, they, that, yeah. that, the, the researcher is recruiting at their university yeah. and that's the yeah. only access to the people they have. Mm -hmm. And also think about the differences. If you've been training for 10 years versus one year, and that might both be well-trained cyclists inside of that study. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I think the older people don't get, uh, represented very often inside of those studies. So what my prediction, and I think everyone probably agrees with this, it's going to be, there's not going to be a, this is the way for everyone. Mm -hmm. Then we just have one training plan, right? <laughs> it's just silly. Uh, there has been a recent, uh, criticism about polarized training that you might, or polarized training and, and train road that you may or may not have seen. And we're going to go dive into all the science between into that next week, but the short summary of, of it is, um, we don't agree with some of the way the study was read. And also we don't agree with how Trina road was represented. And we're just going to talk about the science and everyone can make their own decision on that. But that being said too, what we're going to do is we are launching polarized training plans. Uh, these are going to be underneath an experimental access flag. And the idea behind this is we're going to let people who want to do them, do them. And this will give us a very specific data set under this type of polarized plan. We'll have different, uh, levels of volume two that we can then run 
against other things to really make sure that, you know, uh, that's one, we'll, we'll talk about this more, but polarized means a lot of things, right? So even with whatever data set that we show, if it doesn't work for one person, it might work better for another person. And there might be a different version of polarized that might work for somebody else too. So I just want to say that this data set is not going to be the end all be all. And I think it is naive to think that there is an end all be all one thing for everybody everywhere in the world. We try to go for, let's try to figure out what's best for you and make you faster based on lots of data and constant improvement inside of it. So Polarize, right. we're going to get that out as quickly as possible. Um, like really quickly, it is our CEO's next thing inside of our release. I just want to say not just the right way of training, the right way of training for you, but the right way of training for you right now. Cause yes. what worked for me 10 years ago, isn't working, isn't mm -hmm. going to be the same thing that's going to work for me right now. And so that's going to be another thing that we'll be able to look at, which will be really, really cool. Yeah. Along those lines, but one aspect of the cohorts that I find especially interesting is masters athletes obviously, but a master's athlete who, who, a master's athlete who started training at 45 years of age versus one who's been training since he was 18 years of age, different things are to be expected. And now we can actually tease out those differences based on things that we, we couldn't touch before. This is I the can recap down. this. If I can recap this in another way, adaptive training will allow us to serve you the best training methodology for you at that time, based on your own individual strengths and weaknesses and life constraints. So that will allow us to dynamically shift between whatever you need at the moment, based on your goals and what you're doing. So if, think about that really quick, like, um, it's, it's really powerful to be able to have all of this information about yourself and this information at scale, to be able to make educated decisions and not about scientific theory about what could work, but actually scientific proof about what does work. Yeah. So then that you can really have a lot of confidence in the fact that you're getting the right training. It's cool. And so what people will say is, well, Hey, this is, this is not a scientific experiment because the people who choose polarized are self-selecting, which mm -hmm. is true. And, yeah. but there is a certain aspect of real life that we want inside of this because you do a study. There's a famous study where people were, were banging out threshold and VO two max. And they were going, it was so much intensity for six weeks. As far as I'm aware, this is no study has ever presented as big of gains than in that study. <laughs> and the researchers said, let's do it for another six weeks. And every single person said no. Right. <laughs> so there's a different, your, the, your motivation and your life and your whole mm -hmm. season needs to be taken into account inside of this. So for instance, if uh, for polarized, it has some long rides. If you don't have time for long rides or hate long rides, maybe for you individually at this moment in your life, it would not be a choice because you could not follow the prescription. Mm -hmm. Where if you're in a study, uh, you know, you kind of do what the researchers say for a short amount of time to get through it and get paid. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So anyways, that's, that's a little tidbit of what we want to do. And mm -hmm. I would love as we get further through this, and there's more training methodologies that come out or more things that have some evidence. Maybe it's not perfectly clear. We can bring these in, we can test them and the people that want to test can, um, and then we can slowly move them out or based on what ML says to the right people. Again, this is, well, these are things and complexities that no human can figure out themselves. And that's why we have to do this. Mm -hmm. Chad, I was just going to add that this is, it, it's along the lines of what we did with our high volume of sweet spot base. It was a request. We didn't really think the science was there. We didn't really want to prescribe it, but it, we got a lot of requests and it was like, well, a lot of people want to do it. Let's let them do it. Let's see what happens. And now we get to do that with anything that, that is mildly interesting and people are willing to devote themselves to. Mm -hmm. Right. It's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's going to be so fun. <laughs> John, you want to walk us through some uh, questions? Let's do it. So we're going to do some, like some frequently asked questions, then run into some live questions that you all have submitted as well. If you're joining us now on YouTube, by the way, thank you for joining us and give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, uh, that helps more people will see this. So please do that. And you can also request access for the closed beta of adaptive training at a link that's pinned in the chat right now. And it will be down in the description below. If you're joining afterward, if you're listening on the podcast right now, it will be at the top of the description as well for the podcast. You can go there and sign up for that. Lots of people have it crashed the site already. The site's back. You can do it right now. So, okay. First one, this is a question that you alluded to in the beginning, Nate, and a really important one. I've seen it in the live so chat important. too. 
why does my TSS not trend like it used to now that I'm following adaptive training? Yeah. So before we didn't have, we didn't have all the tools, right? So, uh, you could use a hammer when you should use a screwdriver and TSS, we had ramp, but that, that example before of four by 10 versus one by 40, completely different things. You could have a nice progression over four weeks, building from four by 10 to one by 40 and really do great in your Olympic triathlon, sprint triathlon, or 40 K TT, it'd be a huge win to be able to move that, but your training stress might not go up at all that whole time. Mm -hmm. And this, this will mess with you <laughs> because you can have the same 400 TSS a week for a year, but have a much higher FTP, increase your performance, uh, have PRs inside of, uh, you know, forever different duration and have the levels of your workout zones be a lot higher, but your TSS doesn't change and it's going to be hard, but it's mm -hmm. a new world and it'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. So just it's, it's, I know I see it too. And I'm like, it has to ramp up, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good, still is a good, uh, way to show if you're ramping up too much, too quickly and that sort of stuff. For sure. Um, uh, can ahead. I ask a question? Oh no, no, yeah. we'll do that. Amber, what you're writing in, we'll do it at the end. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, okay. Uh, next one is, uh, how do I use it or how do I use adaptive training? We've covered this loosely, but we should probably define the, how it will look and feel when you use it. Yep. And basically there's two ways you're on a training plan. It will adapt automatically for you. Uh, it'll, it'll ask you, it'll be prompted and then you can have it do it automatically. Or if you're not on a training plan, you can use train now. Uh, we have a whole new career section coming out where it's just going to open the app. It's right there. You can click and go. That is the basics. Um, you don't have to do it. That's really it. I know you explained yeah. a whole bunch of stuff, but we tried to make it super duper easy as if you were getting coached, here's my workout and go for those data scientist people. There's all those edges where you can like play in and have fun and do the, uh, alternatives and look at the levels. Um, and you'll push yourself differently. That's for those kind of people. And I know you're listening because your personality is probably much like mine and you want to, uh, <laughs> that's why you're listening to the podcast, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> It'll just feel like the right workout every time you follow your plan and it feels like the right one every time. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. How's my career page different? That's another one uh, that people are going to ask. Yeah. So, uh, your career page is going to have your progression levels, your current training plan. If you're on one or we'll have train now, if not, uh, upcoming events, your upcoming time off, which is very nice to just see when your vacation is in a list. Um, and then also see your recent workout survey responses. So that's also a way if you miss one, because you didn't have enough time, you'll be prompted to be able to, uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. Can I throw in a quick question that was actually asked by Shane Miller, GP Lama to me, and I will answer this one if that's okay, Nate, Go uh, for it. question, uh, somebody asks is what happens or how does this account for when I get a new power meter or I get a smart trainer instead? And mm -hmm. here's how it works. You'll get that. And then you'll do your next workout with the subjective feedback of the study. And then the objective data that we have of your performance, it will adjust your workouts based off of that. You don't have to instantly retest at your next test. It will be even better. It'll, you know, you'll calibrate with that. But this is another cool thing that it's going to adjust for that because of the fact that we have your objective data, subjective feedback, it adjusts yeah. and you'll be doing the right thing. If there's a hundred watt difference, you should retest. But if you have a hundred watt difference, one of your power meters is extremely broken. <laughs> yeah. <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Battery doors hanging off. It's kind of, yeah, yeah. something was very wrong. <laughs> yep. Okay. Next one. How far ahead does adaptive training adapt your plan? Okay. So we, uh, we do this per plan block and that's how far we look ahead and that's how far we do the um, the like projected levels inside of a current plan block. So that's like ramp test or ramp test, but the, the, the FTE prediction that looks out for as long as you have plan blocks, like whatever your plan builder thing chose or what you have on your calendar. Um, mm -hmm. and we do that because again, we, we're not sure how much you're going to increase for the ramp test where your next levels are going to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so by having that ramp test, it then will adjust everything after that. Mm -hmm. What one thing to add to this too. So, and this is going to be kind of like a little shotgun load for you all, but Nate mentioned earlier, achievable, productive stretch and breakthrough, a training plan intentionally within each energy system is going to give you the right amount of those workouts during a week. Like if you have five days of training, you're going to get the right variety of that at a very intentional one. So what this means is that if you really knocked it out of the park on a certain type of workout within a specific energy system, that might mean that it's going to have a cascading effect across other energy systems and across the rest of your workouts through the block. 
or it might mean that it's isolated to just that next workout that's supposed to be a productive workout that's on Tuesdays, right? Uh, so our system is intelligently keeping track of all of that, training the energy systems independently in unique ways, depending on the goals of your event and you as an individual. So as a result, you may get one updated workout or you may get all the way even for the rest of the block. So it, it becomes a routine though. And it's so cool because after you do the workout, now you'll see how it influenced your levels. You'll even get confetti. It makes you happy. And then after that, then you get to see what the adaptations are. It's like, it's truly addicting. Uh, it's really cool mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Um, okay. Uh, next one, I guess we kind of answered this. How often will your plan adapt? But it's worth saying very explicitly, right, Nate? Yep. Uh, at least after every workout. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe more depending on how much time you have come out or other information that we get from the system. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how many times can an individual workout be adapted? Oh, lots of times because <laughs> we're looking at a block. Really, you could be doing things, I guess, technically every day based on what you, what you do, but it could be many, many times that the same workout could get switched around. You know, it's the fourth week or the third week based on what you do in the first week, it could switch. Yeah, Amber? It's a one way of thinking about it. It's kind of like a weather forecast. So the further out your workout is, the more uncertainty we have around whether or not that's going to be the exact right workout for you. And the closer we get to that, we know with much better certainty because we know exactly what you've been doing up to the day before, how you've been feeling. And then we can say, okay, this is definitely the one that's going to be right for you today. So if you think of it like a weather forecast, the further out you are from today, the more likely those workouts are to change, but the workout for tomorrow is probably the least likely to change because we have the most information going into whether or not that's the right workout for you. So think of it like a forecast. Um, but it's, it, again, it's not going to just throw, it's not going to just derail your training. There, there's a point in having a plan and kind of being able to mentally prepare yourself for things. And we understand that. So it's not going to be vastly different. You know, we're going to just, we're going to give you the right workout. It's going to still be within how you plan things out, you know, within your duration, the specific, um, power zone that you want to be targeting that day. We're just going to make sure that it's the right power. It's going to be the right workout within that power zone. That's going to get you towards your goals. Uh, so mm. it's like a forecast. It'll keep changing until you're right there. And we know exactly which workout is the right one for you that day. Um, someone had a great question of, uh, like you do a ramp test and let's say you get to, uh, like a level 10 threshold or stuff, like what happens? And uh, this isn't built in yet, but we do think there's going to be some people where it is so far off for them that mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to prompt you for another ramp test. But if you just did a ramp test, that we'll have to do some self-adjusting FTP. Um, like we'll have to adjust the FTP for you to give you the right spot inside of that progression. But uh, we just have to have some data on that as people do workouts with these qualitative surveys afterwards. And that is totally in the, like we understand. And it, should, it might go both ways where... You can't do a level one threshold after your ramp test for some reason. I think that's not going to happen. Um, I think the other side will happen for people who can't, you know, don't go deep, but, uh, that it's totally like, I can't, I'm so excited to be able to have this, like, this is the floor of the base system, right? Like this is, uh, we now have electricity in a world where we didn't have electricity. So yeah. we can, and we have all this stuff coming in, uh, that we can then make all these fine, quick adjustments to try to improve everything as it moves forward. Um, and again, this is a, this is a process to get better and I'm sure something will happen where you'll be like, it wasn't the best, right? But we do think that it's 10 times better than it is today, but it's not perfect yet. And then it's an again, improvement. Yes. Right. That's in the system. It's so cool is it improves itself as it gets more data. Yeah, which cool, is right? super, super cool. Uh, yeah. another thing that we should talk about is we recently, we had to turn adaptive training off for all the internal users because we had some queries that were not being, uh, we're not being very kind to us. And we took down our website a couple times. <laughs> and so we have, we're like, oh, we got to fix these queries. <laughs> and we, um, I know. So we, we fixed them, but we all had adaptive training turn off for like two weeks. And once you go into it, you can't go back. Like I actually turned it on for myself for like 10 minutes. Cause I was like, Dude, oh, I gotta know what I you do. Cheater. <laughs> I know. I was like, if I take it down, I take it down and I'll take uh, together for it. But I shouldn't have done that. Um, sorry everyone. But it, oh, just, it was yeah, so it. terrible. It was like, a, it. It's, it, was, it was like some sort of bad time travel movie and you went back like, like centuries and you were like without anything. So it felt like, like it felt like somebody turned the lights off. It was so demotivating. <laughs> and then like once it got and actually, um, all one of the guys in our data science team, 
he ended up sharing a spreadsheet that I could do that kind of helped me guide through it, but it wasn't adaptive <laughs> training. And I was using that and like, I was just grasping at straws. Once I got it back, it was the best day. So you, yeah, so if fun. once you use this, you'll be like, how in the world did I ever train otherwise? And the cool thing is every single workout that gets reinforced just because it's like, oh, yeah. that was achievable. That was productive. That was achievable. That was like over and over. It just feels so good. So, um, okay. So, um, I guess we should talk about the, the last part, the base. Yeah. This section right here, right. Yeah, we I'll, should cover I'll those things. Section right there. Um, cool. okay. First off pricing, how much more is this going to cost? Sorry to say that it's zero more dollars. It's just the same price. <laughs> uh, it's a horrible business decision because I know the value is way more and we're trying to, uh, again, we want to make the world faster, got to make it in reach for everybody. And that's what it is. Someday, especially with inflation, the price will go up, but that's not today. Mm -hmm. So everyone gets it. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we going to launch this? Uh, it is available for closed beta today and trainer road users, a special ones. You probably know who you are cause you're very special to us. Um, get access to it today, but there's also a sign up now. And where can you sign up now? It's trainerroadcom slash adaptive training. Is that right, John? Correct. That's it. Cool. Or you can even do slash AT to make it slash easier. AT. That's easy. Trainerroadcom mm -hmm. slash AT that mm -hmm. is up. And then today what we're launching that you have available in, uh, our beta apps, by the way, those are, we just have this iOS in-app purchase thing that's an issue in Android, where you have train now is available today with your levels. And so all that stuff is adjusted based on that. And the workout profiles uh, that I mentioned about, you know, the over-unders and stuff, that is all available today. And now what we have is a release cycle. This is our goal is we're going to keep bringing in more people into the, the closed beta because again, we don't want to take down the website and that sort of thing. And also there's a couple more features that we want to build and polish things up with onboarding. And then as we get these other features done, they're going to release to everybody. So it'll be a stepped release where like you might get levels and then you might get the survey and then, uh, you know, more of those things, you might get the near career page. And these things will step out, um, one at a time as they, uh, kind of get the checkbox of, we get this many users that did not bring down the website and there's no bugs and as it goes through and today uh there you know there's oh, there's small bugs that are silly of uh i don't know we even talk about it but bugs are bugs and they will happen and we'll move forward so that mm -hmm. is super duper cool and uh i think right now what we should do is we should toast all of the trainer road employees mm -hmm. for yeah. doing this super um and Audrey is going to bring Chad. Chad and I are going to share some. I don't even know what she bought. Um, let's see. We'll find <laughs> out. Yeah, what is you it? You two oh. are adorable. <laughs> what is it? Don Perignon. Don Perignon. Yeah. And Chad, what we also have, as you pop that, everyone pop their stuff. Chad, yeah. we have a special present for you that we built a long time ago. Can you see oh, it me. yet? What? You don't know about this. Oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's so nervous. <laughs> While we pop this. And also, um, I just want to shout out to, uh, let's see here. Um, his name is Corey and he's on the live chat and he said, you guys should have just done one more thing. Corey bounce. Oh. Corey, ah, buckle up. We got, okay, yeah, buckle up. Buckle Corey. up. <laughs> There's one more thing coming. <laughs> so, one okay. More, this is the chat things. space though. Bring this up. Bring the, uh, Audrey, bring can you walk the, directly yeah. behind Chad, please? Uh, Chad, tell her to <laughs> this. <laughs> this is uh so we have champagne we got a live beers with chad but if you can see from this this is chad with a muppet um picture that is that's if from you know, beers you know. with chad yeah uh, and, 400 uh, you know, you know. Yes. thank you for designing that that's Fantastic. very very funny very check cool. him out um, on instagram mm. so uh yeah very amazing uh there's one more thing is i think we should cover our Cape Epic training. Mm. Amber, you how can't get through your... a podcast without talking about Cape Epic. Let's I just love know. Cape Epic and I always need to do that. So, and everyone <laughs> loves it when I talk about Cape Epic. Amber, how has your Cape Epic training been going? Actually, we should cheers at the same time while we do this, I reckon. Amber, what we do should. you drink? I'm, I'm drinking organic sparkling cider because health. <laughs> um, and then uh, Chad and Nate looks like, I don't know if they have a bottle of Dawn P or what they have going on there, but. Well, uh, I want to, I want to just mention, I started a, like a really cool training program, a whole, it's totally new. 
awesome brand new bodybuilding program building a body it's body gonna be building. due in august body. <gasps> <gasps> due in august so, what <laughs> so i am not drinking dom perignon i am also drinking some cider um non-alcoholic Amber's having a baby. I'm having, having a baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the uh, one more thing. Pop the tops. Pop the tops. We're, I've, I'm sorry, cleaning crew. So cheers to Amber's baby and cheers to the, the, the trainer road team. Everyone's been so excited about this for so long and worked so hard. To, like, this is a lot of stuff. I can't tell you how much stuff is here <laughs> and uh, how excited we are for the future inside of all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so cheers, everyone. Cheers to the train road and cheers, cheers too to cheers all of to our uh, athletes and listeners, because like your feedback and your criticism of us, like if you never told us these things, it would be hard to figure them out. So please keep giving it, giving the forum. It's great. I do read it all. And I'll, a lot of us read it all. Sometimes it hurts, uh, <laughs> <We> do. <laughs> but we want to improve and get better. So that's what we're doing. And the chat is going wild. <laughs> cheers to all the amazing people here at trainer road thank you you don't get to go on the podcast everybody. so you don't get the recognition you deserve you deserve a Congrats, lot of it Amber. cheers to everybody yes. cheers everyone cheers okay uh next thing i think i spilled on my mic <laughs> so amber you said due in august yep due in august it's gonna be kind of so when are you gonna work in you know the 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 nanny time and breastfeeding in between cape epic stages how's that gonna work <laughs> curious i'm just gonna stick it in a backpack we'll be good <laughs> oh my goodness a toey. <laughs> a toey. <laughs> that's your partner <laughs> that's it works perfect oh my goodness no i think so, we have a plan for that don't we i think we do mm. uh yeah I i'm racing cape epic i'm filling in <laughs> with brandon <laughs> and i are gonna be teammates yeah, and it's I on uh -huh. It's on. So, uh, so obviously <laughs> Sophia and I, we're still doing it, but we're not racing Brandon and John. That is out of the question. <laughs> I'm really excited what they're going to do. But so that means all my focus is on honey and thunder. That is the, uh, <laughs> that is the team to beat. And I would uh, really like to enjoy alcohol. So, uh, <laughs> the pressure is so much down because I was very scared. If you couldn't tell between Amber and Brandon, uh, which is good. So, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all good things. Um, very now exciting drinks, to go do that. Yeah. It's going to be great. Now that the drinks are popped. Should we handle some live questions? Oh, Ooh, okay. This is perfect. If you were a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so some questions that we have, uh, live. So somebody first asked, is this actual Chad in the podcast or has he been replaced with an AI robot? Valid question. Uh, yeah. um, I've, I've never been. We'll never know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm way too smart to be a human. <laughs> no. that was no, I, I swear, I, believe it or not, I am, I am actually fallible. All you got to do is listen to the first 100, 150 podcasts. <laughs> and every podcast we do, we all screw up, right? That's, that's what happens. So. For sure. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, this, we've answered this one already, but it's still a question that everybody has. Uh, will this respond to outside workouts or unstructured outside rides? Nate? Yes. Yeah, so the system, if you're, it's a trainer road structured outside ride, yes, the system will, will, will do that. The unstructured rides, let's say you do a race, a group ride, you just go out. We are currently internally, we have, I would, I would call it even further than a proof of concept. We are categorizing those workouts and giving you levels and credit for it, but it is not ready for the beta people today to have that. But that is like, it's there. I can't, I don't know how long it's like 80, 20 rule, right? You're like, Ooh, it looks like it's there. But sometimes that last aspect to get that accurate takes a while. But that is such a high priority to give you credit for those workouts. Now, our system with our FTP prediction still understands those, but it doesn't understand it as well as we think it should, which is very important. Uh, again, it's the closing the gap, getting closer and closer and closer, but the, there will never be a perfect, um, unless there's some like chip you can put in your head that we're unaware of, there will never be a perfect. We want to get closer to perfect as we go through it. So that's very cool. The next one, I would just cover this too. Custom workouts. Custom workouts will be uh, categorized too. It runs through our system. I think it's done. I've seen, um, excuse me as I burp. I've seen, uh, <laughs> I've seen the standups for it. It's either done or almost done about having custom workouts get categorized too. So if you have a, you switch out a Thursday with one of your own workouts, you can get credit for that 
inside the levels of the progression. And then that part for sure is then built into our FTP prediction and then other ML things that are being built. Mm -hmm. One thing, one thing I want to touch on really quick with Nate, how you said that this is a feature that's already beyond proof of concept and everything else. Once again, this is in closed beta now. Our, and our intention is not to keep this in some sort of eternal beta, right? Like we want to get this out to everybody, but in, so we will be moving that process forward, adding people, you know, find a bug, squash a bug, add people do that sort of stuff. But with this, we're also spinning off features that we get from this into the productive ex or the production, what we call, or just the trainer road experience. All of you will have probably before, uh, well, before adaptive training comes out, like we talked about. Um, having things like train now coming out and some other things. So expect features to be added regularly from this thing. Um, next question, uh, Nate, this which one good. do you want to handle? Cool. Yeah. Do you want me just to read them? So, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or I can mark them too, but I'll, I'll yeah. start marking them. Uh, how will adaptive training handle multi-sport workouts at the moment? Multi-sport is not in there. That is, it adds more than three levels of complexity in order to do this. Um, but in our mission to make the world faster, multi-sport is very important for running and swimming, both as their own and as individuals. We still have to do make this system be just flying by itself or have a bunch of extra um, employees to do it. And by the way, too, this is like, so I've talked about thing one and thing two. I really, truly don't want to like, I'm trying not to tease things, but people have asked for certain features. And I'd say all efforts on thing one, and then once that gets out and we've improved it and it got to a point we can start working on some of these other things. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry if people said like, I was promising something. I was just trying to uh, let you know why something wasn't, we weren't releasing some other stuff. It's more like same priorities. So this is thing one. Thing two was group workouts. That was supposed to come out after this. Um, and we still have a bunch of improvements to happen on group workouts, but uh, that's that's thing one and thing two. And I hope we can, I'm, I might do a thread in the forum and, and see if, do users want me to tell you what's coming up next or just stay silent? Because I, I don't want to, uh, feel like I'm a marketer trying to do it. I'm really just trying to share the Amber. Yeah. I think one of the things that I, I've noticed internally in our culture at trainer road, which I love is we make a habit of under promising and over delivering. And sometimes we don't always nail that just right because <laughs> we're not perfect, but we really do. Uh, that that is really one of our core values is we always want to like we want to solve the problems that you're communicating to us. We want to, you know, we listen to everything that you're saying and we want to respond to all of the suggestions that you're making to us. And we want to do it in a way that's going to be surprising and delightful and go above and beyond for you. And we really try to do that by under promising and over delivering. And so sometimes. We don't quite get it right, but you know, thank you all for all of your patience with us and your suggestions and your feedback. Cause we do listen to all of it and it is, yeah, it, it is really, really important to us. So I just want to throw it's, that out there. Um, we could use your help <laughs> to, I, it's to not, let us it's know not that just, the right balance. <laughs> it's not just us here uh, that work yeah. at trainer road. It's a massive team that are, yeah. and I'd like to think that we have an extremely productive and very, uh, intelligent, hardworking and talented bunch too. So we're working on things constantly. Um, there's, and we there's have job openings to solve. Yes. We have mm -hmm. react and react native software engineer job openings. So if, what we just talked about sounds interesting to you and you want to join here and a bunch of people on our data science team started in that role and they moved over to it. Uh, it's please apply. We'd love to have you. We need more smart people. And again, this is worldwide. We're not limited to the U S you just have to have some kind of overlap with the U S office. Okay. Yeah. Next okay. question, John. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next one, I, do the workouts. Oh yeah, please Amber. I just want to step back to the question about uh, triathlon. I will say that, um, as a baseline, if you have a custom triathlon plan through trainer road, uh, once we have, if you have adaptive training enabled, we will be able to adapt your plan on a scheduled basis. So we'll adapt all of your, your cycling workouts exactly as we've described. And then your running and swim workouts will be adapted on a scheduled basis. We won't be able to necessarily know exactly your progression levels for running and swimming. So we can't adapt them in the same way, but we will be able to adapt them around, for example, plan time off or miss workouts. Chad, would you like some more Dom? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's 10 o'clock. I mean, we're good. Who's to say it's 10 oh four. It's um, like <laughs> no. time. next question. Do workouts change mid ride? Yes. Okay. This, good this, question. this is such a good question. And if this is our thoughts on it, if you could guarantee appropriate RPE targets for somebody and like maximal output in certain situations, that would be a good idea, but that's not how the real world works. 
how many times, because here's the idea is, oh, if you, if you miss an interval or you like drop the power a little bit, the rest of the workout should get easier. Or if you get a little bit harder and work it, the rest of the workout should get harder. How many times have you done a workout where you're just not mentally set? The first one's so hard and you miss something, you take a little backpedal and then you HTFU and you nail the rest of the workouts because it's in your brain. And there's mm -hmm. this thought, this is the thought here is if you know that if you go easier, the workout will get easier, you will go easier all the time. Mm -hmm. This happens too. you ride alone up a hill. You don't go that fast. You ride with someone else who's very strong or in a group or in a race, group you workouts. Go way, <laughs> a group workout, you go way deeper than you could before. So that's why we think you should have a target that you go for in a workout, which is the, the workout. And then you try your best. We get the RPE data afterwards. We get the uh, quantitative data of like how you did perform in there. And then we adapt, but we absolutely do not want to adapt your workout in the middle of the ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, this all sounds complicated. Do I need to worry about the details? Nope. So for those, for, for the most tell you what to do, what will happen is you open the app. Actually, you can do that with the beta apps. Now train mm -hmm. now picture what you want to do and go boom, boom, boom. Yep. All of this complicated stuff is in the back end. You don't have to listen to it at all. Uh, for adaptive training, if you have that on, all you have to do is uh, either accept the adaptations or there's a little checkbox that says, do this every time. Mm -hmm. You have to do anything. It just boom, 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 adapts. The thing that we ask you to do is answer the surveys. So if you have a survey question, be um, consistent and, and do your best to answer those questions. And if you think it's, oh, I'm somewhere between a three or a four, I need a 3.5. I need a 3.72. Nate, please put a 3.72. It doesn't matter as much. Just be consistent. Don't call at a five one day and a one the next day uh, because I don't know, whatever. It's, it's just important to do your best. And uh, if you do that, the system will work. Awesome. Uh, what sensors do I need to wear or use for this to work? Yeah, well, so power meter is the very best way and a power meter in all your bikes is always the best way to have this set happen. Um, virtual power will work with this. So if you're indoor training virtual power, but to get a better accurate picture of outside rides, um, power meter is best, but secondly is heart rate monitor. So if you're one of those people who rides outside without a heart rate monitor or a power meter, maybe for mountain biking, it might be time to start wearing your heart rate monitor both indoors and outdoors so that we can start collecting that data to better improve models in the future. Mm -hmm. What if I have two different bikes or two different power meters? We uh, once again answered that one earlier, but that one can be a quick one. Yep. That's easy. It, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It adjusts for that. Um, will I be able to ignore the, uh, ignore adaptive trainings recommendations? hundred yes. percent. So, uh, it comes up a little, uh, window and it shows you what is moving. So what the previous workout is and what the next workout is, then you have the option to just decline it. So you can have it to always accept, but, uh, if you want to see, and you're curious, or you want to decline it, sometimes you can, uh, can I complete surveys that have been done for past or can I can, can I do sur or completion surveys for past rides? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amber, uh, we can, but only for a certain time period. Is that correct? Yeah. So you'll be able to go back and either respond to a missed survey or edit a, an existing survey response up to seven days in the past, because what we figure is after about a week, you're not always going to recollect exactly how you felt. And we want to make sure we're trying to preserve the quality of our data set. Right. So if, if you don't quite remember what, how you felt at the end of the workout, we'd rather not have that data than, you know, than add in something that's inaccurate. So we want to make sure mm -hmm. that we're getting really accurate data here. So up to seven days in the past, you can go back and fill in a missing one or edit an existing response. Uh, will this retroactively look at previous workouts? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And to it. So I uh, think I want to say is there are with AI machine learning, there are multiple systems that happen and we're updating each system and then building new systems and then they chain together. And what we're looking at your past workout for your levels, but also using all your past workouts for FTP, FTP prediction, the HRTSS and many other things that we have, uh, to be able to better, uh, to understand you in a, in a better way. Uh, okay. The next one, uh, how will this impact our progression toward our goals? Um, I have a, I have a way of answering this one, if that's okay. Go ahead. 
don't want to jump. Okay. So, uh, so considering the fact that you're using adaptive training, so you're using plan builder. So you've put either an event on your calendar series of events, or just a specific type of cycling that you want to train for, right? Mm -hmm. That's your goal that you're working toward. So adaptive training brings you toward that, but here's the cool thing. Like we have point a, which is where you're at right now. And we know so much about that because we now know your subjective data or your subjective feedback and also your objective performance data. And this is like point B, and this is where we want to take you. But whereas before it was a strict kind of linear trajectory with all other forms of training, in this case, this is going to adapt it so that it's going to bring you to your goal at your best trajectory possible. So mm -hmm. this is going to, the short answer to this, it's going to be the best way that you can possibly reach your goals because it's going to do it at your own terms and training you as an individual. So, right. It, it's almost, if you imagine where you are now as point A and where you want to be is point B, there is an ideal path for you between point A and point B. And that's not going to look like the ideal path for the person standing next to you. And you can't know what that is yet because the ideal path is going to have to take into account, oh, I don't know, context and life and other things that happen that you can't foresee. And so what adaptive training does is it's going to help you navigate that path, even when things are unexpected, and it's going to get you to that point B on the path that's going to work the best for you and what's going on in your life. Great, great way. Amber, you just knocked it out of the park. Took what I said <laughs> and made it way better. Um, will some level of the trainer road system be available to run offline? For those of us th that work at C, it is a huge advantage. Yeah, so uh, the, the ML stuff happens on our server, but you will still have the levels offline and you could try to do some manual stuff on it, but um, you could probably last a f it, I don't know. It, it's definitely not a huge use case for us to build the complete, because that means we have to build our ML model to be able to run in TypeScript on your computer in order for that to happen. And that introduces its own complexity, but you do have the levels and stuff and you can make some more manual adjustments. If you're, so I'll say it this way, if you're a data scientist, you could probably use part of the system and improve your training. If you're not a data scientist, I would not try to do that or data. I'm sorry, not a legit data scientist. This is a persona that we use internally just to say someone who like really cares about the details. Um, that's how it's going to work, but definitely the whole adaptive training system does not work offline. Mm -hmm. Will well, you pop? I, I, oh, sorry. I, I just want to interject there really quick for, for people who are doing maybe one or two offline workouts and then uploading, uh, you know, not if you're it's at fine. C obviously, but if you're going to mm -hmm. do one or two offline workouts and then you upload the second that you upload, it's going to run through our model and then we're going to update your progressions and then we'll give you adaptations on your plan. If that's what we detect that you need. So it will work for offline workouts, just not for, for longer stretches of time. That's a, that's a different use case. Yeah. Yeah. For those who like train in the garage or the basement, there's not, you're not wired in at that moment. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yep. Just make sure you upload, you know, right. as, when you can after that. Will you publish any information about your ML system? We've just published quite a lot actually. Um, but <laughs> too but, much. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna, I don't know. Don't, I feel like some people will take advantage of me because they'll like buy me drinks when we're out yeah. doing something. <laughs> be like, Nate, it'll be like uh, some like reporter or something and write stuff down because I definitely, definitely do that. He's uh, a cheap drunk, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, One Chad. bottle of wine is all it takes. <laughs> Chad, that's just your Don't alcoholic. Reveal. Chad's like, takes me four or five bottles. That's it. <laughs> Only one bottle to feel buzzed? Oh, my goodness. What a lightweight. Um, it, so we definitely won't be doing, at, at this time, like this is a competitive advantage for us. We're not going to describe everything and like want to get published because uh, that would actually not help us. Um, a little thing but, called IP, intellectual property. Yeah. Just exactly, yeah. Out there. But just like Google doesn't publish uh, how they do uh, searching, right? Like mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't make sense to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. That was but, surely typed in by one of our competitors or something. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, but we got it. <laughs> but there is more, uh, there will be more data and insights that we want to share that that system came out with, which I think right. really, unless you're trying to reap, there's, Unless you're curious, you're trying to rebuild it yourself. What you really want is the insights on the other side. Another question. Do I need to be a trainer road athlete to be able to submit my email to sign up for adapt the adaptive training closed beta? Sadly not. Um, you have to be a trainer road user to use it, but not to mm -hmm. submit your email then to have access to it. But Perfect. man, we should have changed that. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Just kidding. Um, okay. And then, uh, 
let's see. Oh, this was a question that I saw pop up a few times. Uh, is it possible for adaptive training to take into consideration also other activities? And people have said a number of different ones like weight training or, yeah. you know, any number of different things. Like yeah. That. So that is the, that is part of that, you know, closing that gap of getting a better picture of your entire fitness profile and how that happens. And, um, there are some other, uh, there's some other ideas around that because we, we're not going to capture everything, but we we do understand that we want to capture more and more and more like steps being one of them and other workouts and weight training and all that sort of stuff in order to better adjust your training in the future and to learn from uh, to learn how that impacts your training better for you. Yes, we totally want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us on this. A final cheers to everybody that's tuning in, listening to this, watching this, uses Trainer Road and joins with us to get faster. This one's for you, entirely for you, adaptive training. Thanks, so, everyone. <laughs> cheers to everyone. And Amber's and pregnant. <laughs> Amber's <laughs> pregnant. It's exciting. And a uh, reminder to everybody, if you want to try this, go to trainerroad.com slash AT. If you're watching this on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. If you're listening to the podcast, rate it five stars and sign up for Trainer Road if you haven't already. Uh, start using it. Get used to how awesome Plan Builder is and the plans and then sign up for that AT uh, the, the launch, the closed beta. So then hopefully you can get access to it quickly. It's a super exciting time. And I personally feel like this is revolutionized, revolutionizing how people are going to get faster. And I'm just really excited to be a part of this team to make it happen. So thanks everybody. We will talk to you all next week with a deep dive on training methodologies in particular, polarized training. Talk to you then. Mm -hmm. Cheers everyone. Cheers. Bye. Everybody. Bye.